members. Good afternoon. Can I welcome all members and officers to the meeting of the Development Control Committee, which is due to the government's advice to practice social distancing. This should be a, a visual development control meeting. This meeting has been recorded and will be available by the Council's website to be viewed following the meeting. If during the meeting a technical error occurs with the transmission, which cannot be resolved within a reasonable time, then a meeting will be closed and the remaining business will be deferred to a subsequent meeting of the Development Control Committee on a date to be determined and modified by way of a publication of the agenda on the Council's website. Everyone participating in the meeting will be accessing this from remote locations. Please could everyone ensure that the mobile phones aren't switched off or to the silent mode. Members will have reserved the electronic copy of the agenda. I will ask officers to present the summary of the key points. For the record of the agenda, I, it can be viewed on the Council's website. Members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting, and those speaking may switch their cameras on at this point. But I would ask, with the exception of myself as chairman, chairperson, and at other times, keep the cameras and microphones switched off, as this will help to minimize any background noise and interference to ensure that connection re remains stable as possible. If any members and officers wish to raise a point or question, they should use the internet messaging IM icon in the bottom left of the Skype window and simply type speak and I will come to you in order I receive a request. Please do not use your microphone and tell him why you to do so. <clears throat> in the event that the committee requires a vote on any item of business before or at the meeting, I will announce that members of the committee have 20 seconds to vote by typing for or abstain in the instant messaging icon. I will then ask the legal officer to announce the decision by the committee. The meeting will be supported by the planning and highway officers and the legal officer from the democratic services will be supporting the committee. We will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout the meeting. When necessary, we mute those not being used. Before we normally connect, formally commence, I will now ask the officer from the democratic services to announce the names of the councillors and attendants at this meeting. I do also ask the officers to introduce yourselves and as when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They too should ensure the microphones or cameras are switched off or not in use. We'll go for the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Um, members in attendance today are Councillor Amanda Williams, Councillor Caroline Webster, Councillor Keith Edwards, Councillor David Lewis, Councillor Gary Thomas, yourself as Chair, Councillor Janice Lewis, Councillor John Spanswick, Councillor John Paul Blundell, Councillor Kenneth Watts, Councillor Mike Kern, Councillor Nicol Burnett, Councillor Richard Collins, Councillor Richard Granville, Councillor Ros Sturman, Councillor Sorrel Dendy, Councillor Matthew Voicey, um, excuse me, Chair. I think that's it in terms of members and for the benefit of the recording, I am Mark Galvin. Uh, I'm a senior democratic services officer at committees. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Item one agenda. Apologies for absent, please. Mark. Councillor, Councillor James Radcliffe, Chair. Thank you very much. Item two, decorations of interest, please. For members and officers, anyone? Uh, Councillor Sony, please. I assume you mean me, Chair. I do, yeah. <laughs> was there. Uh, I'd like to um, declare a prejudicial interest in item seven uh, p forward slash 19 forward slash 895 forward slash rlx ocean farm off david street blangaro thank you thank you uh, 
Right. Could, could I just clarify, Chase? Yeah. Rod, please. Speak. Then the declared a prejudicial interest to uh, Is that correct? Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. Chair. No. Councillor Spearman, please. Thank you. I'd also like to declare a prejudicial interest in the same item. But I am hoping to speak for the three minutes. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Williams, please. Councillor Amanda Williams. Hello. Apologies by um by uh, video isn't working. However, I haven't asked to speak. You haven't asked. No, I said earlier about I've got a poor signal and I might oh. be leaving early. All right, I understand that. Thank you. Right. Right, we're going to move on. Owen. Thank you. Thanks very much. Number three, approval of the minutes, please. Can I have a move on a second, please? Move, Chair. On the 5th of 6, 2020. Second. 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 Thomas Bandwick. Thank you, John. Yeah. Number four, public speakers. Mark. Mark, please. Hello, Chair. Um, no, no public speakers today, Chair. Thank you very much. Can I move on a second, please, for the amendment sheet? Move, Chair. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Have we had one, Chair? Sorry? Yes, there was one given out. Yeah, there was, yeah. So, number six, development control committee guidelines. Guidelines. No, please. Can you no, note it? Chair. Thank you. Number seven, Ocean Farm of David Street, Blangaro. Officer, please, Phil Thomas. Uh, so, sorry to come in, Chair. I think in this one, um, Councillor Sturman, she's declaring a prejudicial interest, but she, she wants to exercise her three minutes to speak under the code. So we'll take it first then, is it? Yeah, I think uh, I think Councillor Sturman should speak first, and then um, the officer will introduce the item, Chair. Right. Okay. When you uh, Councillor Sturman, yes. Mark, you ready for Councillor? Right. Yes. Can I start? Yeah. Wait a second, Mark. Are you ready? Um. Can Craig put the three-minute clock on, please? Yes, it should be up on the screen now. Right. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak. I'm not going to ask you to reject this application, but to defer it for at least three months. And below, I'm listing my reasons. First, I note that on page 19 of this application, item three of the recommendation states, within one month of the date of this permission, a scheme for the effective disposal of dog waste and details of the means of containing and disposing of kennel wash down and surface water, etc., etc. I would refer you to condition number four of retrospective planning application P15-6264 of 2016, which imposes exactly the same condition. Why has this condition not been met previously and why has it not been enforced previously? Indeed, one might ask why, if the condition has not previously been met, is the application even being re recommended for approval now? On this basis alone, I believe there are grounds for deferment until such time as the scheme has been implemented to the satisfaction of development control. Condition two, again on page 19, says the site shall only be used for dog breeding with no sales of dogs or puppies taking place at any time. What will happen when Lucy's law finally makes it to the statute books as promised by the environment minister in her statement on the 28th of February before the end of this Senate session? Is it likely that an amendment to this condition will be sought shortly after, should this planning commission be granted? If the site is not suitable now for sales to be made, what improvements will be needed to make it feasible? Surely it would be easier to defer the decision until this condition has been varied at some stage. And condition four, it requires measures to repair the condition 
um, of the, to repair the roof and recloud or re-render the external walls. This in itself speaks absolute volumes to me of the possible current state of affairs at Ocean Farm. Other dogs constantly currently kept on site in conditions which are not up to scratch. Lastly, please, can we be advised how exactly BCBC will seek to enforce these conditions when they have previously remained unenforced if this application is agreed? Councillor Dendy has full details of additional complainants who have registered a complaint but who have been asked to remain who have asked to remain anonymous. One might ask oneself why this should be the case. Generally, valley dwellers have been discouraged from using local footpaths and tracks leading beyond the farm, as not only are there two chained dogs which bark aggressively at all passers-by, but other farm animals from Ocean Farm are allowed to roam freely on land which is not owned by them, but is publicly owned. Additionally, it is well known locally that you cannot allow your dog to swim in the lake, as it is so polluted by runoff of effluent from the farm. Some footpaths around the farm have been completely blocked off and others have been blocked to disallow dogs to... I got a few minutes now, Chair. Uh, I got an urgent speaker. Come to Webster, please. Councillor Webster. Yes, sorry about that, Chair. Um, with regard to the um, additional sheet, um, although I have got it, it's not it's been sent out to other members. Do other, other members have it? No. No, I haven't received one either. No, nor me. No, no, no. Nor me. Nor me. One second, Ms. Jonathan or Mark. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just to clarify the position with regards to the amendment sheet. I believe we did uh, approve the circulation of it, um, but we'll. Um, <clears throat> We will check on why, why that's not been uh, circulated. Uh, if you could just uh, give us two minutes, Chair. Certainly. We'll have a comfort break in about two minutes. Okay. All right? Yeah. Thank you. Mark, put the clock on, please. Uh, hello, Chair. Thanks, thanks for um, giving us uh, a bit of time to, to, to look into this. Uh, there's been a communication breakdown. The the the, so the amendment sheet should be circulated uh, within the within the next uh, couple of seconds or so. All right, no problem. Yeah. So if it should start popping into people's inboxes any time now. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you want to wait until members have had a few minutes to, to look at it. It's not a very big amendment sheet. Um, uh, and then we can continue with that particular uh, agenda item. What do you feel, members? You all right? I haven't got it. Oh. Hey, Roz. Yeah? I think you shouldn't be on now this moment in time. 
No, I mean, no, that's right. The, you, he was going to switch me off. Yeah. When you start to discuss it, but I'd like to see yeah. the amendment sheet. This I, might be good enough. Chair, just just to come in briefly, um, I think yes, looking at the, I have had the amendment sheet. Uh, I don't think there's anything. Uh, there's no amendment to this item, item seven. Okay, that's fine. There are there are amendments to other items later on. Okay. And sorry, Chair, I didn't introduce myself when I spoke the first time. Uh, Roderick Jones, uh, Senior Solicitor, Legal Department. Mark was going to um, remove me from the meeting. Yeah. Are you still there, Mark? I, Ross, I if just... you can knock, kick yourself up the screen now, brother, and he'll, he'll text you when to come back on. All right, Buzz? She's gone, I think. I, I think Councillor Stewart's left now, Chair. Uh, as, as our members started to receive the amendment sheet. Oh. You want people that, all of you? Right. If, if, before, if, if sorry, John, before we move on, how come Sister Emma got a second there? Uh, Chip. Sorry, Chair, if we come in again there. Councillor Sturman uh, wasn't moving anything because she's not allowed to, as she's oh. declaring the prejudicial interest. We'll have to wait for debate before our members. You know, there's a recommendation on the report, as you know, and then it's for members to decide. But she can't move anything uh, when oh, she, she's got the prejudicial interest. Let me then, uh, am I going to move on a second, please, for the officer's well, recommendation? Hold on a sec, Chair. I think, I think Councillor Dendy wants to, uh, she's declared as well, but I think she wants to speak as well, is it, I believe. Who's that, Councillor Sturman? No, Councillor Dendy. Yeah, she wants to speak, yeah. Well, she, what, once members are happy to proceed, uh, Councillor Dendy should speak next. <laughs> and then I think... The bottom of the move in it. She puts a second there. Move that and then I go to Councillor no, no. Dendy. No, no, you sh no. She should be allowed to speak first. Right, yeah. Then call the officer in to present the report. All right. Okay. Councillor Denny, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know if you want to get the clock up. Um, can I just give a bit of a background context to this? Um, what I'm speaking because what this is, this is the anonymous objectors. Um, I've been with. I've taken advice from um, the the officers and legal that it would be okay to pass me these comments on in this fashion as um the people wanted to remain anonymous so the speaking i'm happy to do it for the three minutes if so be but it's just comments from anonymous people will you do your three minutes then councillor okay thank you noise and impact of amenities and material planning consideration you can't walk past because of the dogs and guard dogs bark loudly it is intimidating and spoils the peaceful nature of the area if the condition is removed to allow the site to be there permanently we'll have lost a whole area of our valley to walk in and enjoy the application needs to be deferred there's a petition being looked at by the welsh assembly about dog breeding planning and a statement will be out in february it should be applied to this plan application for the clarification of the committee, the petition that is referred to is P-05-939, immediate embargo on new dog breeding licences, licence renewals, planning applications until regulations are fit for purpose and enforceable. There is another application in which, which will affect this one. I think it should be deferred until we know the results of the other one, otherwise no one will be able, on, be able to go to the site, which is not good beyond site, which is the not good for the dogs especially for the puppies um i urge the committee to please defer it until there is at least a site visit i don't think you can truly understand everyone's concerns until you do especially how bad it looks from the outside well-being of future generation act is to be realized through the land use planning as stated by planning policy wales well-being is also a big part of bcbc's plans for a healthier place and walking in natural spaces is one of them with the dogs barking and the guard's dog being intimidating to pass by and the land pollution means you're impacting well-being 
The planning policy Wales also says land use choices and the places we create should be accessible for all and support healthy lives. High quality places are barrier free and inclusive to all members of society. They ensure everyone can live, work, travel and play in a way that supports good physical and mental health. By allowing Ocean Farm to be a permanent dog breeding site, you are creating barriers. The Environment Wales Act 2016 introduces the Sustainable Management of Natural Resource Resources 12 SNMR. The SN, SMNR approach which the planning system can contribute are improving the resilience of ecosystems and ecological networks, halting and reversing the loss of biodiversity, maintaining and enhancing green infrastructure based on seeking multiple ecosystem benefits and solutions and ensuring resilient locational choices for infrastructure and built development. Taking into account water supplies, water quality and reducing wherever possible air and noise pollution and environmental risks such as those posed by flood risk, coastal change, land contamination and instability. This addresses my concerns over the waste leading to land contamination, loud barking close to the area and people like me being put off and walking up by Ocean Farm, which I don't think does enhance green infrastructure and that removing the condition to allow permanent use will have a long term impact on the biodiversity, which is not enhancing the resilience of ecosystems. Uh, didn't put weight system in. I know many people whose dogs have been ill from going in the lake because of it. They have That's it. Of- That's it. Now it's the three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Rod, can you come in, please? Rod, legal officer, can you come in, please? Yes, Councillor. Right, I can. I'm going to move this on a second, now, brother. Uh, did you want to call um, the planning officer to introduce the item first, Chair? Well, uh, if I move in a second, let me bring him in, Phil, isn't it? Oh, okay, as you wish. Fa- yeah. That's fine. Could I move in a second apiece for the officer's recommendation? Move. Have we got a second, eh? <laughs> no. Right. I'll go back to uh, Officer Phil Thomas, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, members, you recall that the application was originally presented to the Development Control Committee in February, but deferred to allow members to see the site. Clearly, um, that, that's not possible with the current COVID restrictions. So I've endeavoured to do a short video of the site. Um, if you could just bear with us, Chair and members, and I'll do my very best to present that and give a little bit of a commentary with you. Just bear with me if you can. It's up on the screen now, Phil. Thank you, Craig. Good Thank morning. You, Phil. Chair, if you bear with me, I'll run this video and I'll just give a, a quick commentary as best I can as we go along. So we'll we'll see how this goes. It starts, the video will start at the entrance to the track that leads to Ocean Farm, and that is the end of Davis Street in Blind Garrow. So just, just bear with us as we run through with the video. What we're trying to show as much as anything, and I think it's something Councillor Sturman and Dendy have referred to, is, is the context for the site. So members have an idea where it is. We're going up the track. I'm just looking back towards David Street now and see where the nearest residential properties are. Those are the properties at the end of David Street. Those are the ones that are going to be closest to uh, Ocean Farm. Just continue up on the track. That's Nant Hill Extreme there. You can see alongside a water feature. I think there's been reference to concerns about pollutants from this particular site, which I'll, I'll try to cover in the report. We're coming up to the edge of Ocean Farm. You can see some animals in the field along there. And you can see the context of the site, which is the the, the sort of restored landscape, the former mining area that has been completely restored. Now we're coming into the edges of Ocean Farm now, um, coming close to the actual site entrance, you've got some vehicles parked there. Now we're coming close to the site entrance, you can see the the range of buildings and structures and equipment that are sited in this small holding and that is the main gate access to it. I've now just gone slightly across the other side 
of the valley and we're looking back across to the uh, to the, the holding uh, you can see a caravan there I'll just mention that that is not an authorized caravan that is subject to an enforcement notice so you can see the context of this in terms of the the rural setting um, and I think this will just pick up how far we are then from you look down the track eventually going back down towards uh, going back down towards Bangara, um just towards the back of the site um, now then we start to move in to the site now and to the range of buildings and eventually we're going to go inside the actual kennels themselves this is where the breeding takes place and there's 13 kennels within this single story structure I think this part of the building is where the puppies are bred see the dogs at the end there there's a run on that actual door at the bottom and you see further kennels within the building here the dogs there they're outside in a run that's beyond the building which we'll see just a little time on now in the actual video Right, I'm going behind that building now. This is a run that's been formed between the two buildings that are used for kennel. You can see the dogs of the free run of that area. Um, and there's also dogs outside of that, which are the applicant's own dogs. And that building at the top there, which you'll see now, is where is also used as, to, as part of the breeding operation. And I think that is the applicant's partner possibly doing a wash down of that particular area. That's the back of the building that was referred to um, by one of the members. It's a single story structure. It's not in the best of order. We put in a planning condition on seeking the improvement of that. Some work's already been done. You can see a new rendered elevation there. And that is looking back towards the caravan and the structure there. They're not authorized, so I wouldn't ask you to consider them. We're just looking at the dog breeding operation as part of this planning application. And that's it. Thank you, Phil. Rodney, could you come in again, please? Yes, Chair. Rodney, we aren't going to second that. Right. And Councillor Sturman asked for a deferment. No, well, as, as, I've said, Chair, as I've said, Chair, um, we, we've, uh, Phil, has just, Phil has just showed the, uh, the video. But he hasn't done his presentation of the report. Would you like him to go through that first? I, I think he should. And then clearly, if, a me if any member at the end of that wants to move something, um, make, make a motion, then uh, you should take it then, Chair. That's my Thank advice. Thank you very much. Phil, could you continue, please? Thank you, Chair. My apologies again. I, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, Phil Thomas, uh, Principal Planning Officer. Um, I'll be presenting a number of the applications today because uh, they're my applications. So. Chair, yeah, I'll just take you through briefly uh, a bit of a summary of the application. Uh, the dog breeding operation at Ocean Farm was in, originally granted on a temporary basis a number of years ago, and this application seeks the consent to vary the condition and allow a permanent dog breeding operation on site. Consultants acting on behalf of the applicant have provided a supporting statement which is set out in the report. The breeding use operates from a former stable building, although I find it strange to call it a stable, you wouldn't get many horses in there, but a store building which measures a roughly 9.5 by 2.4 meters, it accommodates 13 kennels, and there's a run behind that building and a further building beyond that. A number of objections have been raised to this application, and we've heard the representations today of both Councillor Sturman and Dendy that really have reflected what we've had by way of written representation. I just need to deal with one of them first off, the rather emotive issue of puppy farming, which is sort of licensed breed, unlicensed breeding of dogs. Um, I, I'm not here, and I don't believe the committee here make a judgment on puppy farming. We're, we're dealing with land use issues today. 
puppy farming is dealt with by other legislation and it, it, it is not material to the determination of this planning application. The applicant does run a licensed operation. So the concerns about puppy farming, as, as, as justified as they may be, and indeed as Lucy's law may become enacted in Wales, that is legislation outside of this uh, process and we're just dealing with the land loose planning issues. A number of concerns have been raised today um, about pollution and washdown. I think that's something that Councillor um, Sturman made reference to and Dendy. There has been a planning condition imposed on this particular scheme of uh, development regarding agreeing washdown. And although I believe the applicant has measures in place, he has not formalised and agreed a scheme with us. We have put a condition back on this planning permission and we will seek that that is agreed within the time frame that stipulated in the draft condition. So that's, there are a number of issues, noise, odour, well noise, it's some distance from existing properties so we don't believe the issue of noise is significant. Noise or problems with walkers being worried by the applicant's dogs, I, again is a, is a matter of animal welfare and, and control and I think there's legislation outside planning that should be brought to bear if that is seriously causing an issue and putting off people using the rather wonderful area there to walk. Um, but again, I don't think that's the role of the planning authority to deal with that. That's something, there's other legislation. So, as I said, the fundamental key issues, if I can just go over them, policy, it's the countryside. Um, it, it is a small holding already. A lot of those buildings you see in that video have been there, they're long standing. We're talking about the dog breeding operation today and the effect that's having. We recognise the countryside in many ways is probably the best place for that type of operation because you can't put dog breeding operations particularly close to residents for the obvious reasons. Talked about noise and odours and the distance we have away and we've not had specific complaints. Pollution and washdown, I've mentioned that as well and the conditions that we would seek to impose again. Highway safety, the reason why we granted temporary plan and permission was highway safety. You could see the track leading to Ocean Farm. It's not particularly brilliant in terms of its width and the applicant doesn't have its control to improve it. It was always envisaged and, and it was indicated to us at the time that the farm would be the place where the animals would be bred, but the actual puppies would be sold elsewhere and likely to be in the, the applicant's property. We understand there have been occasions where people purchasing puppies have called at the property, but they, on the evidence that we have, have been few and far between. They've not resulted in any significant highway issues. Colleagues in highways are satisfied, subject to the same planning conditions that allow only the breeding and not the sale of puppies from the property, that they are, they are content with the arrangement. So members, the recommendation to you today is to approve, subject to the conditions listed in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. I get six speakers now. Councillor Boji first, please. Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me okay? I can, yes, yeah, sir. Um, I, I do have some real uncomfortable things with this um, application. Um, we, we did ask for it to be a site visit. Um, the video is useful, but it doesn't give us um, sound or aroma. And um, I, I, I really would feel uncomfortable making a determination on this application with so many objectors, so many issues. Um, and, and I do feel that, um, you know, there are so many un undone things in terms of previous applications, looking at the video, the state of the site is an eyesore. Um, you know, I, I really feel that we need to have full information. Now, I understand that um, we have this current COVID crisis. Um, however, as we move from lockdown, we could now physically have socially distance site visit. It's outdoors. We could all keep two weeks apart. I know it would be a bit of a logistics issue, but I don't feel I have the tools or the information to make a determination on this application with the information I have. Or if I did, I don't think it's, it. it you know, I, I just feel so uncomfortable about this application. 
Can I get Councillor Bosey? Councillor John, or oh, Councillor Bellair, please. I'm assuming you same blunder there, Chair. Thank you. Uh, I, I was, I agree with uh, Councillor Boise. So I'm, I'm actually going to ask, can we defer this for till a time where we can have a proper site visit? Uh, because I think there are a, no, a number of questions I think need to be answered. Um, so that can only be answered by attending a in-person site visit. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Gala. Councillor John Spanswick, please. Thank you, Chair. I I'll keep it brief and I support what the local ward members said that there are outstanding issues from an enforcement point of view that haven't been dealt with yet and they need to be dealt with. And I take up the proposal from Councillor Plundell, so I'd second that proposal that this is deferred until we have an appropriate site meeting to make an informed decision. Thank you. Jonathan, please. Okay, th thank you, Chair. Um, at, at present, um, th th there are no site visits. Um, it, it's not within my gift to, to, to start committee site visits. That, that will have to be a decision that's going to be made by um, CMB. Um, I can put that request uh, to, um, to, to the Head of Legal Services, uh, but if, if this item is deferred, it could be quite some time before we are able to actually get out on site to actually to, to view it. I, I fully appreciate the um, uh, the member the concerns raised by the members that yes you, you do you don't get a, a full 360 degree uh, full full effect um, from from not being able to see see the site um, in, in, in in person as it were. I, I would all point out at this stage is that what we're actually considering here Chair and our members, is the continued use of the site, <clears throat> and the this is worth sort of bearing in mind that the, these buildings have been here for some time. They, they don't have um, they, they, they they have immunity from any planning enforcement. The buildings themselves have been there for a long time. We we can't do anything about that. They they are outside the, the scope of any any planning enforcement. But it's only the use that we're actually looking at. And the use is 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 as a as a puppy breeding facility. Um, if the puppy breeding facility was to, to close tomorrow, you'd still have the buildings. You could still have um, somebody operate a small holding or agricultural operation from there. You could still have, a person could still keep dogs there uh, as part of that operation. So we're not actually looking at the 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 the, the, the wall structures and and the uh, and the uh, the buildings themselves and the activities it's only that one use that we're actually considering so it's probably worth bearing that in mind so um uh, but it gets going back to the to the actual site visit it's it's by no means certain that we're going to get one and it's not within my my gift as a as as a as a planning officer to uh, to say yes we can do that uh, if the item is deferred then it could be in, deferred indefinitely until uh, we're given the go ahead which may be for some time, but it, if that's what the, the decision of the committee is, then I, I will take that back to the legal officer and um, seek guidance on it. Thank you, Jonathan. What do members feel about it? Are you in favour of the deferment or not? Yeah, yeah. definitely support everything that's been said previously. And me. Thank you, David. Anyone else? I agree with everything that's been said as well. I agree. I have the same concerns. Well, I agree, Chair. As well, I'm not happy with that at all. What I've seen. Thank okay. you. Neither am I. I'm not happy. Right. So, so cheers. I support the deferment, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Ronnie. It's, please. It's, it's been moved and seconded for a, a deferral, Chair. For I think for, for a site visit. Um, it's difficult, I think, for what Jonathan has just advised his committee to to actually say, you know, specific length of time here. But uh, it's a perfectly, uh, you know, perfectly acceptable motion. It, it, committee seems to be unanimous with that, am I correct? Yeah, that's right, yeah, you're all right, uh, Lord. Yeah, yeah, unanimous. You're so all in favour, yeah. I think everybody's in favour. So I suggest it's deferred for a site visit, but we're perhaps just, just an advisory to committee that uh, I see Jonathan's going to have to do some discussions or have some discussions. 
and uh, there may be a, there may be at least a report back or uh, to you chair at the very least in at some time in the future uh but but at the moment it'll stand deferred thank you very much Roger. phil thank you chair all right phil yeah excellent no problem thank you very much we're going to wait that, that is deferred item uh I, seven yes chair right. be, before we go on to item eight um the two members, I don't know if Mark is able to uh, call them back in. Yes, if you could pause, Chair, for just two minutes while we just quickly uh, send them back to the meeting. Um, Councillors uh, Dendy and Councillor Sturman, please. Thanks very much. Uh, and Thank Chair, if I could come in just for a second. If, if members should now have received the amendment sheet, um, if, if the, anybody, any member wants to uh, uh, use the opportunity now to have a, have a look at that and... Uh, uh, before we go on to the next item, Chair. Thank you, Jonathan. Chair, can I just ask Craig a question? Is that okay? What's good, yes. Craig? Yes, yeah. Are you able, just in readiness, are you able to put up the layout plan for the next item? It's yeah. towards the top of the DEF um, document, okay. so if I put it at the top there. Is that yeah, all right? No problem. Okay, good man, thank you. Are you back, Oliver? Councillor Denny, Councillor Sturman, are you back? Yes, sorry, Gary, thank you. Thank you very much. Phil, item nine, please. Land at North, your Stradlin, Park Durban, Kite, please. Thank you, Item eight, Chair, isn't it? Sorry, Park Durban, Kite. Parcel R20 Park Durban. That's it. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, my colleague Craig has put the layout plan on the screen for your members, so um, hopefully that will give you some indication of what I'm just going to briefly talk about. And I, I will draw members' attention to the, 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 the amendment sheet that you've received and just try and give a little bit of an explanation. I've needed to adjust the couple of the planning conditions because just simply needed better wording for them. But a number of the planning conditions have been adjusted because the developers are, as they are, uh, are keen to d d deliver this particular phase of development, which in our current circumstances with the COVID, that's probably quite encouraging that we've got development happening. But they've asked us to look at the wording, not in a way that would give up control on the part of the council, but just to allow them to do some preparatory works before they agree a number of schemes um, that, that, that are important to the development, but we can give them a little bit of latitude in the way that we word the planning conditions. So just that's what the, 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 the amendment sheet deals with, and it will does it in a similar manner for the district centre application. Members, it's a full application. It's, I think, the last phase of Park Derwin, um, and it proposes the development of 102 dwellings, and it's a mix of two, three, and four bedroom dwellings on approximately a four hectare site. Two points of access, one at the north onto Hale Stradlin, one at the east onto Bryn Stradlin, and they will serve a connecting internal road network, including a series of private drives. A full application, which is a little unusual for Park Derham, because the majority of them have all been what we call reserve matters application, which are all under the umbrella of the original outline application. The reason being is that the number of dwellings on this phase of development would exceed the ceiling that was put on um, of 15, 14 units on the park there in development, exceeds it by 68. So 
it's it you know that's why it's a full application because it couldn't be completely compliant with the original outline planning consent because of the increasing numbers that increasing numbers had to be recognized by the developers and they submitted a number of documents um, that you would see with a full application and importantly a transport assessment which is specifically examined the uplifting housing numbers on the highway network and in particular the junction serving park Derwin um, my report gives a brief description of the development with reference to the Park Derwin development brief and the key features to note here for members are the well-defined building line along the site frontages, the use of landmark buildings. Uh, a new feature for us is the use of rain gardens which are part of a sustainable drainage feature on this particular development and they will actually be within the highways. Importantly a retained hedge along the southern boundary of this site. Um, I draw members' attention to the consultation responses received, but also the objections from local residents and the community council, which are summarized on page 25 of the report. Given the policy context and those representations, the key members for the key issues for members today are set out on page 29, and they are basically whether the principle of housing development accords with our policies, whether the uplift in numbers can be accommodated with the existing infrastructure. Uh, whether the design and layout you know, achieves the high standard that the Park Derwin Detailed Design Code wants it to achieve, how it impacts on the residents and biodiversity I I interests on site. The report considers each of those in turn and concludes that in land use policy terms, the use of land for housing is acceptable. In general, the site infrastructure can accommodate the uplift in numbers, albeit the development will be required to contribute to school places and the level of contribution is set out in the terms of the required Section 106 obligation. We, we're mindful of the issues with Coiti Primary School on site and that it is at capacity and the monies that we're seeking to secure uh, within the Section 106 obligation will go toward the provision of additional accommodation within that school. Those are the discussions that we've had with education. Open space allocation, it has none in itself within the site, but it, it is sits within the framework of all the open space that's been delivered on Park Derwin. I say delivered because I know there are concerns about the implementation of open space and particularly the play areas. Uh, and that is something that I think the developers are mindful of now and there has been a seeming a, a, a desire to resolve those issues and we've had submissions of play equipment schemes for a number of areas on Park Derwin so I think there's a firm commitment on the part of the developers to take that forward. Uh, in design terms the layout broadly accords with the requirements of the design code although it's, it's, it's needed a number of changes to achieve a compliant layout. Uh, the relationship with existing properties we've examined that but members will note that the housing is separated from existing housing by a road network and uh, that makes sure that really doesn't have any too much of an impact on those residents. We've also had to assure that the, the layout achieves enough garden space and parking for future residents. Um, and there, there are a number of conditions on the consent and we are going to require some further tweaks to the arrangements um, because some of the parking needs to be re-examined and reappraised. Uh, in terms of biodiversity interest, the main interest lies on the, the vegetation on the southern boundary and that will be retained and enhanced as part of the uh, uh, landscaping for the site. Uh, members, the recommendation before you is that permission be granted subject to the applicant entering into a 106 obligation. Those terms are set out in page 36 of the report um, and of course there are amended conditions on the amendment sheet. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. Can I have a move in a second, please? Move. Have we got a second there? Second. Thank you. All right, Councillor Amanda Winters, please. Hi, apologies again, I've got no video because I'm in a dodgy signal and that's what IT have said, that's probably why I can't get the video. Um, I was you really all right, Councillor, so you're all right. You hear me. <laughs> right. I was pleased to see the addition about the school because that was one of my concerns. Um, so I've got a couple of questions. One with regards to the Section 106 for the school changes. Um, will that happen in line with the houses being built or will those children have to find somewhere else to go to school first before any work is carried out at the school? So that's one question. 
Two, I wanted members to be made aware that a number of people in the report complained about the bus stops. Now, I know Persima and the school bus stops have been in talks to try and get those temporarily moved so that it's safer for the children whilst construction is going ahead. I wanted to point that out. And thirdly, I've had a copy of the plans of all the play parks, but my concern with the play parks was I would have liked to have seen a condition even for just the play park across the road that's due to be built to be in place before any anyone resides in any of these houses because they've told me themselves that they won't um, commence any of the other play parks until the the one they have built in the estate already is adopted and I've been asking for two and a half years now and my concern is that they will just leave the play parks until the end of the development so I was just hoping we could have a condition even if it's just that one play park across the road because I think I've, I've heard there's a petition going about uh, there's 650 people have signed asking for Simon to put the play parks in because some of them have been waiting for seven years so that's all I have to say. Thank you Councillor Williams. Fair please. Thank you Chair. Um, the Section 106 obligation, it, it's a sum of money, um, 228,000, have I got right? I, I think that's, that's the figure we're, we're looking to uh, secure through through the grant of plan and permission. Council Williams just raises a fair point because at the end of the day, you've got, these houses will be built and there will be children and people living in them in, in, a, in a space of time. We generally get the monies from developers, not always all the sum up front. It's generally phased over the over the development. It's generally a, 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 the, the 106 obligation is something that our 106 officer will negotiate with education and, and seek some agreement that, the, that they can be comfortable with the funding as it is delivered by the developer in the obligation. I think that's something we'll have regard to councillor in terms of how the wording is done. It's often difficult to get all the money up front because clearly when they're initially building the houses, they're, they're not placing that demand on the school. But I think we will look quite carefully at the wording of that to make sure that, that it is secured and it's not left to be paid right at the end of the development. Regarding the bus stops, again, we, we, we've looked carefully at that because there have been issues regarding that. The, Persimmon are looking to address that on this scheme by taking all the construction traffic onto Bryn Stradlin on the east of the site and then out onto the highway network so that they won't go anywhere near the bus stops. And I think that's, that's a good response in terms of avoiding a conflict of construction traffic with those bus stops which are used as, as the report says, as places where school buses are, are dropped off. Um, Play parks across the site, yeah, that, that, that's, that's ringing true of, of all the representation that we've had. All I can say is that outside of this application, there is the, the outline plan and permission and a phasing and delivery plan for open spaces. I think what we can do is look at that document to see that they are in compliance with that. And if they're not, we have powers that we can bring to bear for those areas to be delivered. The only offer I, a comfort I can offer at the moment is that there's a clear intention because the, I, have a, I have a submission for a number of play parks, including the one quite close to this, uh, 10A I think it's called, to be delivered. They're just agreeing, wanting to John, finalise the screen with parks and for that to John, be delivered. So we, we, want, we, we, we want to make sure we agree a scheme, that parks are satisfied that they will then look to adopt. So I think all I can say is there's a commitment to take that forward possibly an acknowledgement that there has been a fallback on the or, or a sort of a, a missing a target maybe on part of the on the part of the developers so i think as i said twofold we we can look at what the existing agreement requires of the developers and we will work now to get these designs finalized and hopefully then implemented they want to do it over the summer months so i'm hoping that will be something that will be done thank you chair thank you phil amanda did us answer your questions it answered two, but I still can't see why we couldn't have something in there to just protect the, all the residents in that they, we have a play park at a particular time. Because I know Persimmon, I meet with them every month, and I know the money is in building houses, not play parks, and they have categorically told me on numerous occasions they won't put these in until adoption, until the BCBC are ready to adopt, because they don't want to pay for the insurance of the play parks long term so they've told me that's why none of them have gone into place I bring Phil back in now uh, Amanda Phil please 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. I, I'm not. I'm not too sure about the issues with the position of the Parks Department. Um, obviously, we we all know the Parks Department in the authority are, are fewer in number than they used to be a number of years ago, and I think there are challenge with challenges of getting schemes submitted, agreed. Um, I think it's disappointing if they're, they're they're simply not providing it because you know the, the, the it, parks are going to take so long to adopt them. Um, ultimately, what we've got is a play provision to the north of this site which is controlled under the original plan and permission and this is a new full application now I know it's the same developers I appreciate that as persimmon doing both I'm not sure of the validity of a planning condition on this consent um, to tie them to deliver the area on the adjoining across the road as it were all I can suggest that we do is look back at what other permissions are in place um, and in whether they are failing in terms of their compliance with the, the delivery of these play areas, and, and, and to look at that and see is that as the mechanism for delivering this play facility that's quite close to them. I'm just not certain that we've got the, it, it would be a valid planning condition on this consent to make them to deliver the play, play facility on the other area. Jonathan and Rod may, may be able to guide, guide members further on that point. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. Amanda, does that answer that second question for you, or third question? Well, it's still, it would be nice to have the guidance as to whether we can or not, because I know, having spoken to Phil Beeman in Parks, that um, he's told me that they haven't paid any of their fees for any of these, for the adoption of the original one. So, you know, I am concerned. If it was another development, it would require a play park in there. But because me it's second. got existing parks on the estate... Shut the door. He's got... Sorry, yeah. yeah, I was saying if it was another development, because it had existing parks on on the estate, you know, we'd still look at the existing parks. We'd, we'd ask for a new park in there because of the number of houses. But because it's got existing parks on the estate, we're using those. And I've got no problem with that. I've got no problem with the extra houses. It's just there's a large number of houses up on that estate with one tiny little play park. And I think Simon are trying all they can to wriggle out of providing the other ones. Phil, you better come back in, please. Um, yeah, I, 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 it's it, it's a fair point. As I said, they're not providing uh, open space and play equipment on this site. Um, not on it. We've looked at it in the in the totality of the whole site, and they're, they're meeting their obligations in terms of the requirements of policy because there's lots of open space provision across Park Darwin, as the council has indicated not delivered as yet and there seem to be some complex and uh, some complexities in terms of how that's happening um it, it, it's whether if we said on this particular application that we put a planning condition that they could only build a certain number of units until the area i think it's called leap 10a i think i've referred to it in the report apologies if i got the number wrong is whether that would be a planning condition that we could put on this development say you can only go so far and then you'll have to deliver that playground that that is you know it, 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 i'm slightly nervous of it because it's outside this application i'm obligating this developer to do something on land outside of this application site albeit i do know that they do control that land i think it's a discussion count chair i'd i'd, I'd ask jonathan perhaps just for his thoughts on that as as the group manager thank you very jonathan would you let to come in please uh, yeah yeah certainly chair and, and just for the record i'm jonathan parsons the group manager for planning and development it's a bit late in the in proceedings but i realize i hadn't done that earlier on um it's um a perfectly valid concern that's been raised by the the, the councillor um I, I i fully understand those those concerns i, I think in, in terms of conditions we've got to make sure that they comply with the tests the um the uh, sort of legal test for, for applying conditions and uh, one of those tests it has to be necessary is it, 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 it has to be uh, legal and and, um, and enforceable um, and again I'll probably uh, ask, ask uh, the uh, planning planning legal representative to maybe uh, see uh, clarify some of these these points it is possible that we could put a condition with what's known as um, it's a negative condition or a, or a grumpian condition, it's, it's been known as, that prevents certain parts of that development 
becoming operational or, or, or being occupied until certain other works that are not necessarily on the site uh, have been completed. That is possible, but of course, it's always challengeable. And when we put a condition on, we, we have to accept that, that there may be challenges to that and, and, and the applicant may decide to challenge it and uh, we would be in, in, embroiled in, in, in an appeal process if, and we could come off quite worse from that if, if, we, if we we're not sound. But um, the, the only way we could actually do was, as what the, the, the local member is asking for is, is this sort of negatively worded condition that would maybe prevent houses being occupied until certain other works have been done. Um, but it's whether that is proportional to the actual development uh, whether it's a correct or a proper use of planning law, uh, I may have to uh, ask ask Rod to to give us a legal view on that. And uh, we have put conditions on before, uh, uh, John Zanami. Oh, we are, we've used to use them. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Use negative word. normally for highway improvement and visibility displays. We don't allow certain things to take place until other things are done. The difference in this one is that we, we're asking works on land that's maybe not is outside the control of the developer or the local authority and that's where i'm a little bit um i, I need a bit, need a bit more assurance on uh oh, yes chair i'm um, well i think jonathan's outlined the issues um i suppose f from a planning perspective uh, if this if this development is what 102 houses or whatever and uh, phil will correct me if i'm wrong here but as i understand it the people on the new development would use uh the play areas or whatever that had already been constructed elsewhere now if i've got that wrong perhaps phil will tell me mm. uh, i agree with jonathan only a grampian condition could be used which says Thou shalt not do more than so much until such, you know, something is provided. But um, there's got to be a reason for the condition, which has got to be a planning reason by law. That's got to be, you can't put a condition on without a proper reason. So um, what would the reason be, I suppose, is the question. And that, I think, would turn on whether this particular development, as it's, as it's been presented to members today, does that require anything to be done about play areas? Hmm. Which, again, Phil will correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, under the original consent, the outline and all these uh, reserve matters, there, there are play areas and, and so forth, but they haven't been delivered, is, it seems to be the issue. That's a worry then, isn't it? Hmm. That is a worry, but the the question is, uh, was is the... Um, is the, the initial outline consent and and 106 and um, and the, you know other mat reserve matters were they sufficiently robust to deliver this mm. or deliver the play areas uh, as opposed to does this development now what's before you today actually require something to be in it to, about play areas because there's n there's none I think on this new site proposed mm. so. That's the difficulty, Chair, I think, is, is to fit it into reasonable, as John says, it's got to meet the tests in the circle of conditions, any condition has, and it's got to be reasonable and reasonably related to the development in front of you, that you're considering. So, so that would be, that'd be my concern. Is it reasonably related to this development? Or actually are we trying to, would it be trying to correct the issues uh, from the existing development? A few years ago, Chair. this council oh, took a contract to the court because he didn't build a, a play area in Tondila, if you remember. Chair, can I come, can I come in? Of course you can. It's it uh, it, it just picking up a couple of points of what Rod and John have said. Uh, the, the, there may be a case here because the development here, in a standalone development in a different place, would be required to provide either a contribution or something towards open space provision and play equipment. It, we, what, we, what we've said here is because of the totality provision on the site, 
that is sufficient to serve this development as well. So are, th there could be an argument to say, well, then they are reliant upon play equipment and play provision elsewhere on the estate to, to comply with the policies for this development. Maybe there is a case to suggest that if that is it, that there could be a planning condition imposed to say, you don't occupy the, beyond the 50th dwelling of this development until the open space on, I think it's Leap 10A, I think is the nearest one, which is where they would go to, is very, very close to this site. It's where they possibly could facilitate it. Now, I, 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 I'm, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but from what Jonathan and Rod have said, we've got to make sure conditions stand the test at the end of the day. Possibly, possibly there's grounds to say, because they're not providing open space provision on this site, that we could require them to provide that equipped area close by. Uh, Jonathan and Rod I, I, and Chair, I, I, I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, th thank you, Phil. I mean, that, 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 that sort of concurs with my line of thinking on this, is that this, this, de this development is dependent on open space that provides outside the red line boundary. And I think it's, it's quite, probably quite reasonable to, to, um, to link it that way. But it would be, the reason would be to ensure that the, the occupiers of the new development have access to open space. Yeah. Which again is in line with um, LDP policy. It's in line with with new Welsh government policy on 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 well-being. Um, I, I think we could possibly justify it on, on that basis. But um, I don't know if Rod has got any further comment on that. Well, just to come back in, Chair, to say that <clears throat> from what Phil has, <clears throat> excuse me, from what Phil has just said, I think this sounds as though there is a planning reason because. Uh, for the people in this new development, if it's if it's approved, they will be using they will be dependent on uh, on the uh, play play areas uh, on the other uh, on the existing development being properly adopted and available. So, from that basis, I think you could, or if committee wished to, it could impose a condition, and um, if you'd let the officers come up with a wording, but uh, it would be a grampian condition, I think. So, if we put a condition on it up to 50 houses, if that play park is not there, what do you think, Rod? Well, then they, then they couldn't... Um, Stop. Yes, Isn't we it? could enforce a condition to say, yeah. you can't go any further with this no, development. Like, yeah. If I go back to Amanda now, Amanda? Yep, yeah, I'd be happy with that. Thank you very much. Thanks. Are you all in favour? Have we got some not more speakers there, Chair? I've got more speakers. Chair, we can speak. Nick. Just, uh, just, uh, oh, yeah. committee, just confirm that. I mean, clearly, other people will, other members will speak. But would committee be happy with, with that condition being added? Yes. 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 Anyone else, please? Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Sounds like anonymous. First. Yes. yes. Okay. Councillor Bennett, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I, I have similar concerns. I think this is a large concentration of houses without um, any open space. My concern really is the safety of the children who are expected to cross over that main road um, to the new play areas. This is, a, is effectively a housing estate on an island within Park Darwin. It's not easily accessible for children to independently make their own way to a play park. And that concerns me on a number of points and I, I think that children will be directed towards green space areas within um, the estate itself and I'm particularly concerned about the safety of the surface water lagoon and pumping station in the bottom right hand corner because I feel this is a place where children will naturally congregate if they don't have a willing adult to escort them across the road to a play park. Um, I just feel that this is just too many houses in too small a space and that there's not going to be anywhere for, for, for children to play. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Phil? Thank you, Chair. Um, Can you just, tell us about this lagoon, please? Yeah, no, that, that's an existing facility. It's not part of this development. It's there already. Um, the lagoon is already there. It, it, it's, it's, it's an existing drainage infrastructure that was put on the park there in development just to give the member some comfort it, it's sealed it's 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 not open so it, it's not a, a facility that that, that, that as, as i understand it presents any 
danger to, 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 to children or any persons at the end of the day. Um, safety of children of people getting from this site to, um, well, anywhere on, on Park Darwin, but particularly going to the open space, because the, the district centre is going to lie to the north of this site, so it's about movement of people from here to all, all, all the key places on the estate. Um, just just to be mindful of, there are there are some crossing points already um, bit across uh, that, that will allow people to get across um, the road that fronts the site. And the Highway Authority, in, in a number of the planning conditions, is looking for those to be enhanced in terms of making them what we call active travel routes. And highways have worked quite hard, actually, to get active travel routes and crossing points from this layout right up to the district centre. And as it happens, as you're on the way up to the district centre is where your playground will actually be, the area that Councillor Williams was talking about, which is actually quite close to this site. So in, in, in answer to the, oh, that, that, that's helpful, thanks, Craig. You can see that there, there's a slight, there's an island there, which actually represents a crossing point um, where you've got a, a proper arrangement to get across the highway. And the intention is that, that there's going to be, a, there's, a, there's a wider cycleway foot where it goes up on the western side of, the, uh, of that road there. And we're looking actually to get a similar facility on the other side. That area where the, the arrow is currently pointing is the playground that we're talking about. So you can see they are quite close. There will be a point to cross. I, I just wonder, I, I, Rob is with us in the meeting today. I don't know if Rob wants to comment on that issue of the crossing points, just, just to, from a highway safety perspective. Thank you, Chair. Go on. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Councillors. It's Rob Morgan, Principal Officer, Highways Development Control. Um, as, as Phil has mentioned, there are existing crossing points already laid out as part of the infrastructure works for this development as a whole and those link that parcel with that greater development. Um, as indicated there, there are two islands up in that top corner. There are also another further two crossing points, one at either end, um, and, and subject to improvement of one of those routes north of there. To, to serve the district centre, we're, we're, we're satisfied that those crossing points in themselves are sufficient to enable crossing of that spine road into the greater development from this parcel. Thank you, Rob. Right. Have we finished, Phil? Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right. Are you all in favour of the recommendation with conditions? Chair, I, I did. Do you wait to speak, Chair? I'll formally move, Chair. Thank you. I said, are you all in favour? I'm still. I still have a question, Chair. I was waiting to speak, Chair. Just give me a second. What I got you, Carlang? I I will turn on to the PC for you. That's all I got. Yeah, Chair, we've got Councillor Spanswick, Councillor Webster, Councillor David Lewis, and Councillor Blundell um, and requested to, to speak on this item. Right, John, please. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, listening to what I've heard so far, I have some serious concerns on how the whole estate has developed in respect of open space and play areas, except what's in the report saying that there's plenty of provision. I'd like to see it actually detail on a map with calculations of where the neighbour equipped areas are and the sizes of them, the local equipped areas. Um, because as I think um, the plan officer said, this application on its own would merit um, a local equipped area of play in its own um, size of 100 houses. We're not asking for that, even though I strongly feel there should still be some local area of play in there, because toddlers are not going to cross the road on their own. So those were young families, very young toddlers, still ideally within 100 houses need a small local area for play. The excuses, because that's what they are, the excuses from persimmon homes are not building existing ones because PCBC um, haven't yet agreed to adopt them is flawed because they have to provide the play areas whether or not PCBC adopt them or not. Because I'm not aware that in the section 106 it says the PCBC will adopt them. And, and if we haven't had conditions in the 106 in the past saying that, that these players should be built 
prior to 50% occupation of houses, we've been a bit slack in our um, wording of the 106 agreements because they should have been built to date. They haven't been built. And now we have Pazuman quickly sending plans into a, a, a diminished parks department who haven't got the staff to deal with it, knowing this application coming forward. I'm being a bit cynical, but I have concerns with this particular developer and their real intentions on dealing with community facilities um, in any development. So at this moment in time, I wouldn't be happy even approving it. I'd be preferred, I would prefer to see this deferred to have the full details of the wording and there would be some specific date set with deadlines when these players are built, regardless of whether BCBC adopt them or not, because it's still the liability for the developer to build the play areas as part of their planning condition. And if they're not adopted, it'll be their liability to maintain them. That's something they accepted as part and parcel of existing planning conditions. So at this moment in time, Chair, I would prefer the matter to be deferred. And I would move that until we have the full details in black and white of exactly what we are talking of, along with a map showing the whole park there site with calculations and areas of all the players in open space so it can be double checked. Thank, Thank you, John. Have I got a second um, Chair, Chair, can I just clarify a few, few points there uh, before we, 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 we put this to, to members? What we've um, what we need to sort of point out really is that the Park Derwin development, which is it is tw it's twenty year old planning consent now, it's 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 been in 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 uh, in planning for quite quite a while. Mm. What we need to point out is that there was a master plan that was attached to this development, uh, and and the wall development, and this particular uh, parcel of land, it's one hundred and two dwellings, um, that was already marked for housing. So it's already had that consent in in outline, um, and under the previous consent. So it's got the consent for housing. What this different difference in this development to the uh, to the outline is is the increase in dwellings, which is is around about 60 extra dwellings over the the the, the cap of 1,500 dwellings that that. Um, was originally granted in the outline. So, so the, the principle of the residential development is already there. It's just the additional units on on top of that. And and the reason for the cap was primarily to do with transport infrastructure. And uh, and it's detailed in the officer's report that um, that infrastructure is, is is capable of of maintaining that um, highway safety uh, issue. So it's it's not a case that this is an extra de de development of 100 houses. It is it is extra houses. But it's already built into the master plan. The master plan as well outlined the um, the open space, and um, there is a there is a master plan drawing that that is available. I, I don't know whether that can be presented today. That that will actually show the various parts of the of the development, the the um, uh, the, the, the shopping element, the retail element, and the open space elements. That 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 does show it quite correctly. Um, I think that the request is to defer. Well, we we would we would have to I'd have to alert members that if you defer determination, then the it is open for the developer to appeal non-determination, yes, yes. and that would be something that we would then have to defend at an appeal or, or you know at an appeal stage. If that's felt, if that was an unreasonable decision on our part, then there would be the issue of costs as well. So I think it needs to be. Taken in, in in the round really as to as to the, the the reason why we would need to defer, but um, it is part of a master plan, it is part of a, of a consented scheme, but there is an additional element of houses um, that 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 would feed in in into there. So I take the members' point that there is more development going on there. If this was a standalone application, a new fresh development, then yes, we would look to secure on-site um, open space, on-site play areas, that will be the, the norm. Um, but because this is part of a, of a, of a larger scheme, then, then we, we are relying on the uh, ex existing open space provision. Um, I don't know if Phil, Phil will want to comment on, on, on the size of that, if we've got that information to hand. But that's that's a little bit of a background there, Chair, so um, hopefully that will, would guide Thank you, members Thank to, you, John. to the decision. Let me bring the rest of the speakers in first, and then we come back then. <clears throat> Caroline Webster, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much for the presentation and all the additional information. Um, 
I am, you know, very aware that, uh, that there was a master plan that was put into place before many of us were elected, indeed, probably before my hair went grey. Um, I, I'm going to express my, my frustration again that uh, the catchment comprehensive school is in Pencoid, whereas if it were to be in Brinteg, it would be walkable, thus reducing our revenue cost um, moving forward. But again, um, that you know, I, I get that that's not uh, for this forum. No. Um, I don't want to defer it. Our economy needs uh, to get building going, and I, I would certainly appreciate this uh, getting going to bring some money into the economy. My main concern uh, was that one of the officers mentioned that parking needs to be re-examined and reappraised, and if that happens, is there scope, is there space in this application for the developer to increase the number of houses at that point further. Councillor, if I take the next two speakers, and then perhaps Bill can answer that for you. Councillor David Lewis, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, myself and Councillor Janice Lewis are concerned about the additional impact on the road infrastructure, uh, especially at Junction 36, which is already at saturation point, the A4061 and Spencer Road. Thank you, David. Yep. Councillor Bedell, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Webster actually answered, asked my question, um, so I'm okay. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else I missed? To speak? Right. Phil, please, if let Chair, you come in. Chair, Matthew Voisey has asked. Councillor Boise, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, one of the advantages of being quite late in the uh, the questioning is that you get to hear quite a lot, and um, several things have come to me. Um, one is we're always told um, that we must only judge an application on what we have in front of us. Now, um, Jonathan mentioned that there was a master plan, and this is actually an uplift in the number of houses. Um, and that we have to judge this application on this application. Um, I might be wrong there, but that's what the principle was. Now, the also, also the thing about the place schemes, um, if this was a standalone application, I, I, I think it, you know, the, the officer said that it, it would have a scheme. Now, working on the old and I wasn't particularly good at uh, A-level maths at statistics, but they're mutually exclusive. So if the other developments, if, if this development is relying on another development, but that other development doesn't develop, it must be tied to this development. And I, I, I do feel that this, um, th this making, you know, provision after 50 houses or something is is the right thing to do um because otherwise we'll end up with nothing ever being done until they're absolutely forced to and you know maybe we should have used these these conditions before but i, I do feel that we have to judge it on the merit of this application um, i do think we need to determine it today because i am concerned obviously um, of delay and and you know non-determination uh, the the effects of that and we want to get houses built for people to live in um, and if, if this is the only thing that's holding I do think we need to have um, a condition that you know after 50 houses um, that play, play facilities are brought into beneficial use and the fact they're relying on another development well that's their issue not ours. Thank you, uh, Councillor Boji. Phil, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try and pick up on a couple of those issues. Um, quite right, as Jonathan referred to, there is a master plan. It, it, it is, it, it's a dated document, but it's entirely relevant still to this particular scheme. It, it's actually in the design code, which it sort of details up the areas of open space. Um, I'll try my best, if I can, Chair, to put it on, if I... See what we got here. Chair, can you see that? It's coming up now, Phil. Okay. It's loading. 
I can see it, yeah. Now that's that's a that's taken from the design code. It's called the Open Space Master Plan, and you can see. Well, basically, the green areas of vegetation, uh, the dark green areas of vegetation, and the, the lighter green areas of buffer or landscaping areas. Um, just to give us context, uh, if you can see my cursor moving around, that is where we're talking about R20 is, and I talked about the hedger along the southern boundary. This is the sort of play area that would be the logical one that children would be using from this particular development and that that's that lagoon feature down in the corner of the site there um so that's the master plan you can see there is open space i think the master plan there have been slight slight variations to that as the development has progressed as inevitably the, the there often is but just giving you context that's where that area of open space and the provision of that open space is controlled through the outline planning consent and the kind of phase and delivery plan. So that should happen there. That play equipment should be delivered there, irrespective of this scheme. But I think they make there is sense in tying potentially this scheme or the occupation of a certain number of houses on this scheme to the delivery of that play area. It almost gives the developers a sort of say, well, look, we've had concerns about your delivery, and this is the means of securing that provision for those residents under the terms of this planning permission. Um, Councilor Webster made reference to car parking and the possibility of a re-examining of the parking spaces potentially may be affecting the number of dwellings. It, it certainly won't allow them to put more dwellings on here. It, it's trying to accommodate things like visitor car parking on this development in a way that is entirely satisfactory to our colleagues in highways. Rob has looked at the development and the layout time and time again, and there are further tweaks that need to be done to make sure there's enough on-plot parking per dwelling and there's enough visitor spaces. It's been a challenging layout because, as I said earlier, they've, they're incorporating sustainability or these sustainable drainage features within the highway, which is, which is okay. It's an accepted practice to do that, but it then does remove some of the on-street parking space. So it's been quite a careful assessment, and we're still not quite there there's no capacity for an uplift in numbers. It's about accommodating that space within the layout that they propose. And we believe with a little bit of, you know, pulling and twisting here, those spaces can be provided. It's an exercise we'll have to do, uh, and we'll work with the developers to ensure they meet our car parking guidelines. I, On the points that Councillors Lewis um, raised about additional impact on the road infrastructure, I'm probably going to defer to Rob on that because that's more an impact on the network. <coughs> Councillor Voisey talked about play schemes and contributions and seeing the benefits of the planning condition um, of putting the prior you know, to the 50th dwelling being occupied. And I think that, that makes sense of tying this development to, to the delivery of that playground. So, Chair, if you want to ask Rob perhaps just to come in on the impact on the highway network, perhaps he can answer that a bit better than I can. Thank, thank you, Chair. Rob, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just for for your information the application was supported by a transport assessment prepared by acom um, we've had that or independently audited by arabs on our behalf um, the the tra transport assessment modeled the impact of 103 as it turned out 103 dwellings um, and that indicated, or, or our assessment, our audit came back with the view that the, the TA, in concluding that no mitigation was required, was actually a reasonable consideration. Um, it, it needs to be considered as well that that audit of 103 units did not take into account the the fact that there are remaining units which could be implemented within the existing level of uh, 1514. So actually, the TA is only although the TA covers 103 units, they will only be building 68. So we're satisfied that the TA in indicating no material impact is acceptable. Thank you, Rob. Does that answer your questions, members? Thank you. Chair, 
I, 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 I think you in nowhere, Rod. Oh, thank I, you, Chair. Sorry. If um, you've had a, a move on a second, all right, for the men, um, we've also had weak conditions. And then John then brought in the deferment. He had a move on in a second. Uh. That's so correct. So who do I take first? Because the because the um the move uh, the motion for deferral is the, an amendment effectively. Yeah. I would take that first, Chase. So I'd put that first. All right then. Uh, this is a motion to defer. Right, John. Yeah. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Well, could I clarify? If there's a meeting in August, could I defer on a on a basis? If there's a meeting in August, we have. It's not going to be holding up any major development. You know, a month is nothing to worry about. And I'd like to see things in black and white, what we agree and do. I'm going to check on Let me bring Jonathan in now. Okay, th thank you, Chair. There is scheduled a special development control committee meeting. It, it is actually scheduled for the 6th of August. That's not a, f a firm date at the moment because we, we are still in uh, negotiation with um, a developer on a, on a, on a large site in Tondi, which is 400 hot hours is. Uh, that, that may be pushed further back um, in, into August, um, so we, we we don't know for sure that we'll we'll have that meeting, and, and that meeting is only there for this one particular item. It wouldn't prevent us bringing other items to that meeting if if necessary. Um, there will be an, there will be an item on the LDP on the on the, on the um, delivery agreement. Uh, that's that's an emergency item as well. That that will have to be uh, taken on board. Um, but I can't tell you when that date is, is, is going to be exactly. There is another meeting, a, 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 a formal DC committee meeting in September as well. That, that, that's been that's in the forward work programme. But the August one is a little bit um, flexible at the moment, shall we say. It's, uh, it's, it, it may have to be pushed back. Um, and, and the reason for that is that we, we've got some uh, new information that's come in on that particular item that we, we need to um, take take it take on board. So, in in discussion with the developer and the applicant, that they they may be happy for us to push that back. But yes, there may be, or they may not. <laughs> I don't think that helps. Thank you, John. Jo uh, John Spanzik, please. Yeah, chair. Well, on our basis, I'd, I'd still be happy to, to move to defer for the basis of you know, maybe a month or a couple of weeks. And we'll see in black and white there. this, this right. agreement. Oh, if you go to Rod now, and back to Rod, please. Yeah, uh, well, as Councillor Spanswick's moved, as you say, it was seconded by Councillor Burnett. Yeah. So, on that basis, Chair, I think uh, members, as you read out at the beginning, members need to vote by indicating either yes for deferral or no, if they don't want it deferred, or, of course, you can abstain. And I think right. they do that by, um, by pressing the IM icon. Right. So we give members a chance to do that now, Chair. Thank you. All right, Rod? Are you there, Rod? Yeah, sorry, Chair, I was, I was trying to... It's kind well, of it isn't, isn't that easy, but I, as far as I'm counting it, I think there's a majority for the furrow because I count 11 members for the furrow. Thank you very much. And um, um, yeah. one, two, three, yeah, def, uh, definitely majority for the furrow, Chair. Thank you. 
Uh, just to clarify, Chair, what, what the reason for the def deferral is to um, is to look at the overall open space provision for the development. John, is that it? Yeah, Chair. I, I'm just, I understand the 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 grant or the condition that can be put on regards buildings for a certain number of houses before. You know, yeah. Is it a cramping condition? Do you understand yeah, that? Yes. To see that in right there. Um, okay, okay, Chair. We'll, we'll attempt to bring this back to the special DC committee uh, sometime, hopefully in August. Uh, at the very least, it, it may have to go to September. Um, as I mentioned, there, there is a risk that um, the, the, the applicant may appeal non determination. Bear in mind, this has been deferred from February. Or it, it was, uh, sorry, March. It was due to be considered in March. So there is that risk. Um, and, and the decision then may ultimately be taken out of our, our hands, but we'll try our best to get this back to um, the next available uh, Development Control Committee, Chair. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Phil? Right. Item 9, please. Land north of your Stradlin, Park Derwent County. And it's uh, Phil again, please. Thank you, Chair. Can I just ask Craig, Craig, you there, are you able to put up the layout plan for this particular site? Yes, is it the um, post about the district centre site layout revised plan? Give, give it a go, yeah, I'll, I'll okay. have a little look. Chair, while that's happening, I, I just just again make reference to the um, the, the, the amendment sheet again, j just to sort of refer members to the amendments to the conditions on similar grounds that I said earlier on that you've got a developer that is uh, quite keen to make a, a start on the development. And in, in fairness, the district centre is, is is something that we, in a very broad way. Um, happy that you know it's coming forward. We, you know we consider the merits of the planning application, of course, but I think um, probably most people that live on Broad, uh, sorry, Broadlands Park there and would would welcome a district centre. It's a reserve matters application because the principle of putting a district centre on Park Derwin has been agreed under the original outline planning consent, and there was reference to the district centre within the section 106 obligation. The site lies in the southwestern quarter of Park Derwin over, and over two areas of land either side of Forth Akelin, um, which is the main sort of circulatory access road serving the estate. The eastern parcel will accommodate what has been termed the Alpha Block, which will comprise, a, comprise three UTL units on the ground floor with residential accommodation above. The area fronts on to Forth Akelin, but shares all other boundaries with existing dwellings on relatively new housing phases. The relationship with these properties is described in detail in the report. The main building footprint is rectangular in form with a mix of roof designs over a two and three story building. Extracts of the elevation are on page 55 of your report members. Heights will vary to account for the changing ground levels from 13.7 meters at the northern end, which is a fairly substantial structure. Uh, down to 10.4 metres at the southern end, which kind of reflects the change in levels and the proximity to houses. The three-storey block will accommodate a convenience food store in the largest unit, as I said, with the residential accommodation at the above. Car parking and the service yard will be provided at the rear. That's car parking for shoppers and for residents, and that will be accessed via a new road junction formed at the northern corner of this phase and directly opposite the junction with Closter Iris. Whilst residents will access and egress through this junction, Service and delivery vehicles will egress via a gated access at the southern end of the Alpha Block, and this will be controlled by the retailers and landlords through a plan they will have to agree with the local planning authority. Across the road, the western parcel will accommodate the Beta Block, which also shares its boundary with existing properties. The development in this area comprises a single-storey block of retail units positioned centrally, a minimum of 11 metres and a maximum of 4 metres from the shared boundaries with the properties of Bryn Iris. Building footprint will measure 31 by 18 metres, with a pitch roof reaching a height of 9.4 metres uh, at the northern end and 8 at the southern end. It again um, 
reflecting the changes in ground levels. That block originally was going to be two-storey, and that's one of the significant changes to the scheme. The service and parking areas again created at the rear uh, and on the southern side of the unit, served by a single point of access positioned to the south of the retail block. Um, you've also got on the southern part of the western phase four dwellings, and they'll be constructed um, by Persimmon Homes, and they'll be a combination of two three-bedroom detached properties, two-storey, and then a th pair of three-storey semi-detached dwellers, dwellings on the corner to try to create a landmark building. For the whole development, detailed uh, landscaping proposals have been submitted, which will include planting of native hedgerow along the boundaries of the eastern parcel, landscape zones including a mixture of hedge and tree planting, and the shared boundary with the western parcel, with the properties on the western uh, boundary rather, um, with, there will be a landscape zone there with tree planting. The application has been accompanied by um, an, inv an environmental noise survey. Uh, not surprisingly, you're putting a commercial development in what is a principally residential area, and there's been two noise surveys undertaken, the latest one to reflect the changes to the layout that you're now looking at today, the current layout. I draw members' attention to the consultations again that we received, but also the objections from local residents. We've done a number of consultations, if not three or four consultations on this particular site, because the changes have been made to the scheme. And uh, it, it has been noticeable that through that consultation process, although we still have objections, I think those objections have, have reduced in part to the fact that they've scaled down significantly this the development, the physical development, but also the number of residential units that were going to be provided as part of the development. The main issues are set out for you on page 53 of the report, and they really are, does it comply with the, the Section 106 agreement and the outline plan and permission? Does it achieve a high standard in terms of design? Will it safeguard the living conditions and well-being of residents? And are the proposed access arrangements acceptable in highway safety terms? As officers, our assessments concluded that given the principle of a district consent was agreed as part of the original consent, and that its scale accords with that permission and the policies of the local development plan, it cannot be opposed on those reasons. Achieving the high standards of design required by national and local policies and park dairy development brief has been more challenging, and the first submission for a number of reasons failed quite badly. Conditions will be imposed on this development to control the look of it, the landscaping, and that will ensure, we believe, a development that will achieve a high quality in terms of design. Safeguarding the living conditions and well-being of residents, probably one of the, the most critical elements of this scheme, members, um, because you are putting in a commercial development where there are now already residents. Um, I think many of those residents broadly want a district centre, but understandably, they have concerns potentially about the built form of it, how it was going to look, the size of it, the scale of it, and its operation. You're talking about a delivery yard, servicing, shoppers going back and forth. Um, we've looked at that very closely, and the scheme has been changed to try to ameliorate some of the impacts on those residents. And there are, as you know and have seen in the report, a raft of planning conditions that will seek to control hours of delivery, hours of operation, delivery management plans, residential parking areas, and the opportunity to further enhance some of the landscape and along the boundaries of the site. I can't say to you they will have no impact on these residents. They clearly at the moment have an undeveloped piece of land next to them, and they're going to have a commercial area. But we believe through the controls that we're looking to impose, through the planning conditions, that the impacts can be minimised, not completely taken away, but minimised. Uh, colleagues in highways, um, who may be able to answer questions on the particular access arrangements, have been very active in trying to get improvements to the layout in terms of parking, the service and arrangements. But again, a number of the conditions that are imposed will, are there to secure and satisfy them that the, the arrangement in terms of servicing and the managing the servicing yard will, will, will work in highway safety terms as well as amenity terms. Um, in terms of there are residential units here, and we talked about earlier on a little bit about contributions towards education. I'll just make a point here. This residential, the, 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 the living units here are proposed under the umbrella of the original outline planning consent, hence the reason we have not sought that this development delivers contributions. It's also flatted development, so there's 
there's limited scope with that in terms of looking for education contributions. So just to clarify why you don't see that in the Section 106 obligation. Members, the recommendation to you is the permission should be granted subject to the applicant entering into a Section 106 obligation. And obviously the conditions are set out in the report and the amendment sheet. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. Can I have a move and a second, please? Yeah. Move. Second. Thank you very much. Am I going to speak as you? Uh, Councillor Williams, I believe, has asked to speak uh, first, Chair. Thank you, Tom. Since you knew the name. Hi. Councillor Williams, please. Hi, thanks. I've got three questions. Um, one is with regards to the um, retail out outlet deliveries. Um, I think the shops in Park Darren have been long awaited, and I think 98% of uh, residents can't wait to have them uh, up and running so they can actually access some, some uh, services. Um, but at the moment, it says in the, um, in the plan, seven, seven till eight, they can deliver. But at the moment, with construction, the construction companies can't have a delivery of any items on site during school hours, not school hours, school drop off and pick up. And that would be my concern is um, they've done that. So it's safer for children to walk to school to Coity Primary because um, year five and six can walk to the school unaccompanied. So it's how to make that safer for the children at the bottom of the estate to get to the school. Um, second question is I could see one of my concerns when I saw the original plans was um, the car parking spaces to the right hand side and um, I didn't know I couldn't see from the plans where the doors are are the doors directly opposite those car parking spaces will there be double yellows down that main trunk of road to stop cars just parking and blocking because obviously it's the main access to the school and everything else and to the rest of the state um, and will there be bollards to stop cars parking up it right in front of the shops pulling up the car parking spaces onto the footpath and then the final question is um, the three-story buildings. I couldn't understand myself um, reading plans, how high they are. Is there another further level on top full of roof space or are they built into the into the third story, the flats? Because all the other, the three-story buildings on Park Darren at the moment, the third story is actually built into the roof space. And that's my question. Thanks. Thank you, Amanda. Phil, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, there's a good point on the retail deliveries. I, I think that the, you've got at the moment on Park there, and obviously a lot of construction vehicles going back and forth, oh, obviously perhaps less now because of the phases of the development are, there are not so many. Obviously the school is located in, a, in part of the site. Um, I'll probably take a view from Chair, if that's okay, from highways on this particular point because it's generally they seek to control construction traffic operating outside of the school hours you know so when kids are going to school you, d you don't have construction vehicles going back and forth the difficulty i think with deliveries to the retail units is that you've got obviously the public highway they anybody can legitimately use that at any point in time um, and the delivery yard for this facility is actually behind the units so you know there will be safe passage for children, for, for adults to walk on the improved, because we're seeking improvements to the routes that go through that district centre and to that district centre. We're looking for active travel routes to go either side of the, the road that serves it. So I think I, my own personal view, but I would take a view from Rob on this, is that you've got safe pedestrian passage for people to walk to that district centre and there will be a crossing point. I'm not sure how far we can go to saying they can't take deliveries within those hours because we're going to restrict the deliveries to mainly the working day anyway. If you take that ability for them to deliver to the shops, um, you know, even close. I'm thinking of the arrangement of Broadlands, the district centre there. The actual district centre there is right next to the school and the actual service road right in front of the actual school. Now, that has operated in, as I understand in, uh, as I understand the situation safely, I don't know when the deliveries are taken to that site. I perhaps, Chair, will ask Rob maybe just to give some thoughts on that particular issue. And he may comment on the fact that, yes, Councillor, there will be, we're looking to put waiting and restriction orders along the road network throughout the district centre, slightly to the north of it and to the south of it, to make sure that 
there isn't an overspill of people or shoppers parking up on to the curb or close to existing houses and also trying to put bollards in certain locations to give protection to pedestrian users and not allow vehicles to bump over it. In terms of the, the scale of the building, it, it's it's that northern block um, is three storey. You've got two floors of accommodation above the actual shop. So you've got two floors of flats above it. And then it is roof space that basically is above that that gives the building its height. There's no accommodation within the roof at all. So the, the, the accommodation is in the first and second floors. And then the, the roof is the is the higher part of the building then I, I don't know if i've explained that pretty well i think we, we we've set up the height of it. it it's not it's 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 30 meters so don't get me wrong it, it's a significant building it's meant to be a landmark building that people will be able to see uh, and it will be significant in terms of the development um we've looked at that carefully in terms of distances from existing properties and i'm not going to say to you they won't see it they most definitely will see it um but it is we consider it distant enough not to have that direct impact such as loss of light overshadowing and, and, and those usual planning considerations so chair i don't know whether if you want rob maybe just to pick up on that delivery uh, Phil. thank you chair thank you councillor yes um we have actually sought um a delivery management plan by condition and i think we could we could possibly look at ensuring as far as reasonably practical most deliveries do not occur at maybe school peak times um, however you know it is noted that the highway would be unfet you know is capable of unfettered use by all users um, and each parcel of commercial has its own delivery bespoke delivery yard off the highway further to that um, the majority of pupils would not necessarily be going through this commercial area or along the main spine road other than maybe a dedicated crossing point um, they wouldn't necessarily be using this as a as a desire line to the school so in terms of seeking a restriction based on school travel on on the commercial deliveries we haven't done that it is it is a slightly different scenario to the to the um, to commercial deliveries to building sites as such, where where those build, where those vehicles may may be arriving on mass and delivering and turning maybe immediately adjacent or on or on the highway front in those sites. These deliveries will be occurring away from that uh, main frontage. And as Phil has confirmed, there will be um, a suite of bollards and WLOs as part of this development. Thank you, Rob. Amanda, can you come in, please? Thanks. I was just trying to clarify the deliveries, only because there's conditions at the moment, because that's where the deliveries go at the moment, is to where the district houses would be. And I wondered why they'd put a condition on for no deliveries there for construction deliveries, and yet you can have deliveries to a shop. So I just wondered that clarified as to why they changed their mind on that. Thank you, Amanda. I go back to Rob again. Uh, Rob? In, in short, it is it is purely because this development now will have its own dedicated delivery yard, which will be managed by a delivery management plan, whereas con construction operations invariably involve um, multiple operators, multiple drivers, not necessarily easily um, managed in terms of how and when they deliver. Whereas these commercial units will be delivered to by delivery companies who will be, op, you know, obviously they'll be under obligation from the from their customers to deliver in, in a safe and appropriate manner. So that's why we haven't sought any more from these. Thank you, Rob. Are you happy with that, uh, Councillor Williams? Yes, thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor Watts, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, straightforward uh, question. Um, in the previous application and this application, 
there's a uh, mention uh, in recommendation A in both papers of uh, 20 mile an hour limits and the sum being required to implement the traffic calming for 20 mile an hour is £8,000. Um, I'm wondering if that is a total of £16,000 or whether that £8,000 mentioned in the first application at Park Derwin is, is just that single payment. Um, uh, or whether there is a, se a second payment required of £8,000 for this current um, application that we're considering now. So is it £8,000 or £16,000? Thank you, Councillor. Phil, please. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Watts, I think you, you may have come across something here that we may have to adjust. Um, <laughs> Rob, Rob, may be, <laughs> Rob may be able to guide me, but I think between the two schemes, there's a requirement for three traffic orders. Am I right, Rob? In which case, the potential is that the sum of money is twenty-four thousand pounds, not sixteen. But that's correct, Phil. Chair uh, Rod, uh, we we may have to adjust um, with everybody's agreement the resolution there. I know we haven't got that on the amendment sheet; that's been missed um, because we are looking for three orders and three orders are three eights of twenty four thousand pounds so i I'll, I'll take a lead from jonathan and rod on that chair if i may thank you rod please yes uh, chair well uh, clearly it's simple enough from my perspective if um if we want twenty four thousand pounds we yeah, should amend yeah. what's in this report and put twenty four thousand pounds instead of eight all in favor so i take that amend it please can I move the amendment then, uh, Chair? Thank you very much, Councillor Watts. Second? Seconded. Thank you very much. Cut it down. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rod. <coughs> right. Councillor Spanzik, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll uh, be very brief on, on waste management. On page 49 of the report, the head of street scene has raised concerns about the, the bin store capacity being limited and locations are inaccessible for refuse and recycling vehicles. So, I, I, I'm this, I can't see if that's really been addressed and amended to try and make that easier or better uh, to be dealt with. There's also the issue about the centre itself and making it a community focused area, about litter bins and seating areas. I can't see anything built into the application to provide litter bins and how that's going to be dealt with. I'm assuming it's going to be a private area, there won't be any adoption for the council to be removing litter. But looking beyond when it's built, it needs to be kept clean and tidy. It needs to be a respectable place. It needs to have bins. It needs to have some seats. Um, I think that should, now's the time to deal with that. That's the thing. It's no good leaving that to the developer and hope that they put bins and hope that they clear litter later on down the road. Thank you, John. I go to a fair, please. Phil Thomas, please. Sorry, Chair. Sorry, Chair. Um, just on on the point, I think there are I think there are some seating areas certainly proposed at the front of the site. Um, we have actually got a, a condition on for a revised landscaping scheme for this particular area, and I think some of those issues we may we may look to re review review as part of a hard, soft landscaping scheme for the whole of the. It, it was particularly to the rear of the site because I think we can make some further enhancements as it relates to the property boundaries. But I think there's an opportunity in light of what Councillor Spanswick said is looking at the public realm areas at the front of getting the maximum we can to create a sense of a village because I think that's what the, the aim of the development brief was. And that will be the uh, sort of uh, landscaping, seating areas, there's bicycle stands going there. So there's a sense of community. Just a point on community uses. We're, we're only approving strictly A1 retail use this year the likelihood members in, in due course we're going to have applications for other types of uses in here and that doesn't exclude community type uses so in terms of community benefits it may be just broader than a retail centre but that the time will tell as far as that goes in terms of the arrangements for collecting waste I think that's prin principally for the residential units um, the, 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 the latest revision of this plan has, has been it has looked at that. It's quite possible, Councillor, that they may well have their own private collection service for this particular housing association that are likely to operate this unit. But the, the, they have looked at the arrangements now in terms of the whole servicing of this yard means that a vehicle can come in at the north, pick up the recyclings and, uh, uh, and the waste from the residential and exit 
down at the southern part of the site. The other arrangement, the first plan that we saw, and we haven't had revised comments from Street Scene, was a very much more contrived and more difficult arrangement, which I think had its challenges of doing that in a safe way whilst providing all the car parking we needed for the residents too. So I think what we've got by the latest layout is, is a revised it's a revision, excuse me, that is that is better, far better than what we what we had on the original scheme. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. Okay. John, are you happy with that? Yeah, thank you, Phil. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Bosey, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, once again, um, obviously this is another development, and I, I am actually pleased to see um, a development with residential accommodation above retail accommodation um, it's a good use of uh, land space providing accommodation and I, I, I'm, I'm very pleased to see that um, I think that um, the one issue on deliveries to the stores um, that would concern me is the noise and the timings um, as there is in my my ward and we have regular complaints from neighbors about noise delivery um, they have a yard, it's an acoustic yard, but drivers st sit outside it with their engines running, they come at different times um, outside the, the permitted times and clearly um, with accommodation above the shop and um, accommodation houses all around, um, clearly there needs to be some strict control over the timings of the deliveries with a start and finish time. Um, I don't believe, as the officers have said, that we can really restrict them the use of the highway because the highway is is for use. So um, I just want to make sure that if we do put conditions for as and when they can deliver to the shops, that is um, is kept because otherwise it's pointless putting a condition. Thank you, Rob. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Rob. Chair, do you want me to answer? I can answer that if you wish. Thank you, Phil. I, it's, it's a fair point, actually, and it is the challenge when you, you are um, introducing commercial development where there are existing properties. I think there's planners, we'd like it the other way around, but you don't build shops when there aren't houses. So um, it, it, we, there's a few measures through the planning permission that we will hopefully be able to address the concerns the council has. The noise assessment that was submitted had to consider not only those residents that live around the site, but the new residents that would live above the shops. And our colleagues in shared regulatory services have insisted that deliveries to Alpha and Beta Block will only take place between 7 in the morning and 8 at night. So, all right, that's, that's a bit broader than the working day, but it, it, it's, I think, within reasonable times. Plus, beyond that, we've got a delivery management plan and service and management plan that we want to see because we want to try and avoid the deliveries coinciding with each other so you don't have that all things turning up at the same time plus going further than that there are controls over rating levels of equipment that will be the air conditioning units refrigeration units they all have to achieve a certain level if they don't they've got to be mitigated and also on certain boundaries the need for acoustic fencing to be provided beyond the simple close boarded fencing that has been erected by the developer so it's a series of measures um, because you've got houses close by, th th there are impacts, but it's about it's about minimising those impacts. And I think, in fairness, shared regulatory services have have gone further in terms of what they wanted than what the noise report recommended. They felt the justification was for curtailing the operation of the retail units and the deliveries to the retail units more so than was put in the report and I think we share that view given the proximity of the residents so they're not beyond challenge the conditions at the end of the day a developer can try and vary those and we may be sitting in a committee again dealing with that but we we think we've imposed conditions that are reasonable and will give sufficient safeguards to the amenities of residents thank you chair thank you Phil are they thank you chair yes thank you thank you much Rod, please. Yes, Chairman. Well, it's been moved and seconded. Um, With conditions, or yeah, we've changed. I think mem members of amendment. members have agreed the amendment to the uh, 106 right. uh, heads of terms. Right. And um, hopefully, Chair, members will be in favour. <laughs> okay. 
If all in favor of the recommendations with the amend amendment, please. Yes, in favor. Yes, in favor. Anybody else? All in favor? Yes. That's Canada. Then. Thank you very much. Right. Item 10, please. Land adjacent to former Three Horseshoes Public House, Lamb Row, South Canary. Right. Rodney, please. Yeah, that's me, Chair. Right. Thought I got away there, Rodney. No, I've just been waiting patiently. Uh, my name is Roger Davis, Development and Building Control Manager. Take you through these uh, last few applications, and there's one more with Phil as well. This relates to three horseshoes or land next to the three horseshoes. Uh, the application is being referred to committee to enable consideration of the objections received from local residents. The application seeks full planning permission for one detached three bed dwelling on land adjacent to the former three horseshoes public house in South Cornelly. The site already benefits from a relatively recent planning permission for the erection of a detached dwelling, which was granted in July 2017. The scheme has been reconfigured so that the dwelling has been repositioned within the plot and an alternative access is proposed off the eastern boundary of the site. The applicant contends that the changes will provide a safer access point uh, with improved vision displays away from the bend, an improved living environment for the future occupiers and an improved landscaping scheme. The proposed developments would not have any adverse impacts on Lamb Row or on the surrounding area. The relocation of the vehicle access away from the bend will improve highway safety and the majority of existing trees will be retained to preserve the rural appearance of the site. The residential amenities of the future and neighbouring occupiers have been carefully considered, especially the consented scheme for four new dwellings on the site of the adjoining Three Horseshoes pub and the occupiers of the former public house as it stands now. The access has appropriate dimensions to allow delivery and emergency vehicles to access and egress the site. The turning area is provided within the site and the access point has been shaped to ensure that vehicles leaving the site can only turn left into a splayed refuge area, which will double up as a passing bay on this narrow lane. The existing access and drop curb arrangement will be removed and a footway will be reinstated to promote and encourage walking along this lane and to stop vehicles from parking there and narrowing the lane. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to conditions and the amendment sheet. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rodney. Could I have a moment a second, please, for the recommendation? I'll formally move, Chair, but I'd like to speak. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Councillor Richard Grammy, please. Thank you, Chair. I, I thank you, Rodney, for that report. Um, a couple of things. You, you did say that the fire service and the ambulance would have access up that hill. Well, I've been up that hill a lot of times, right, knocking doors, and when there's two cars either side, you can't get an ambulance or a fire brigade will go up, for, up, up that lane. I'm just making that point. And plus, when you go up that hill, on the left-hand side, there's always two or three cars parked adjacent to this house which is now going to be built right so there'll be no parking the other side outside so there is sufficient parking off-road for that house thank you chair thank you very much uh, richard rod please yeah thanks councillor uh, yes there's sufficient on-site provision for parking for for the dwelling um and by blocking up that existing access there's a five bar gate and access into that paddock there or uh, before you go around the bend and that will be blocked up um, to the curb reinstated and the pavement reinstated to stop people using that as a uh, an informal uh, pull-in area to park so hopefully that will stop the situation where people people are parking there on both sides of the road and blocking up that uh, uh, lane for use by uh, anyone let alone uh, the emergency services so I think we've covered that uh, through the, through the um, through the proposals. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much. Any more questions, please? All in favour of the recommendation? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Item eleven, please. Rodney, please. Sixty-six Grove Road, Bajan. When you're ready, ready, Rod, please. 
Thank you, Chair. Right. Uh, the application is referred to committee to consider the objections raised by local residents and following calling requests from the local ward members. Planning permission is sought in this instance for a change of use from a class C3 dwelling to a class C2 care home providing supported living for a maximum of two looked after children with two members of staff. The existing dwelling is a traditional two-story mid-terrace dwelling house. No external or internal alterations are proposed as part of the scheme. The proposed C2 use class is distinct from the C2A use class, which groups together secure residential institutions, uh, young offenders institutions and the like. Therefore, a separate grant of planning permission would be required to change a C2 use such as this into a C2A use. Uh, so in effect, it couldn't happen through permitted change of use. It would have to be the subject of a planning application, so that would be controlled. Members should note that in certain circumstances, um, residential dwelling houses can be converted into children's care homes without the need for planning permission. Each proposal, as you all well know, has to be assessed on its own merits, taking account of various factors such as the level of use and the operational aspects of the care. Normally, a house can be used by up to six people living as a single household and receiving care without the need for a change of use application. However, a relatively recent court judgment concluded that although adult carers with, will be present at all times, as they would not be living permanently at the property as part of a household, and a group of young people under 18 years old could not reasonably regard it as being capable of living together as a single household, the change of use to a C2K home is required. In this instance, the property will only accommodate two children and two adult carers in a residential area with many similarities to a standard family home. The local ward members and local residents have raised a number of concerns regarding the impact that the care home would have on the residential amenities of neighbouring properties. These concerns can be grouped into the potential noise and disturbance caused by additional comings and goings with an institutional use and the potential disturbance from the children's behaviour. The home would be registered with the Care Inspectorate of Wales. One-to-one -one supervision would be provided and staff handover would take place at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Parking would be provided at the rear of the property and the plot benefits from an enclosed rear garden that would provide an external amenity space for its occupiers. Due to the limited number of children and staff involved, it is considered that the use would not unreasonably compromise the level of amenity that is currently enjoyed in the locality. It is also considered that the level of activity and other likely effects of the use would not significantly exceed what might be expected from a standard family home. In this case, the precise day-to-day -day function in the care home is not known and given the proximity of the site to nearby residential properties. In the event of a significant increase in comings and goings, a two-year temporary permission is considered to be reasonable, which will allow the LPA to fully assess how the care home functions in practice. Objectors, concerns and anxieties about the proposed use are acknowledged, but there is no solid evidence to demonstrate that the change of use to a small children's care home would result in a marked increase in antisocial behaviour in the neighbourhood. As part of the registration process with the Care Inspectorate, the applicant must demonstrate that they meet certain legal requirements set out within the regulations and the Care Inspectorate for Wales can take enforcement action where care homes have been shown to fall short of these requirements set out within the Acts and can remove a care home's licence. As such, whilst the fear and perception of crime is a material planning consideration, there is no reasonable evidence based to justify the fear in this instance. In conclusion, the proposed children's care home would be a residential type use in a residential area, and there is no objection in principle to this use in this location. Given the extent of local concerns about the potential level of activity and the functioning of the care home, a two-year temporary permission is recommended to enable the impact of the proposal to be fully assessed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rod. I've got no speakers. Can I move in a second, please, for the recommendation? Move. All in favour? You're all in favour? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. So, sorry, can I speak, please? I did. You can speak by all means, yeah. Yeah, we, we got two speakers, chairs. Um, yeah, but he not, nobody come out, Nola. Yeah, a bit of a time delay there. Sorry. 
this, this hasn't been approved yet, has it? No, it didn't go all the way. Go on. Right. Thank you. Um, I, I put some comments down, and um, the strength of feeling in Grove Road on this application is quite strong. And um, the reason I called this in um, was because Grove Road is a particularly um, constricted road um, with traffic, usually cars park both sides. Sometimes you, you, you know, traffic is a real issue here and we're waiting for um, residence parking to be introduced. Um, I have some serious concerns, and that's why I've commented, and I wanted a site visit so members could actually see for themselves um, that, that parking and traffic is going to be a problem. Now, um, the, the officer mentioned about that there's no evidence of antisocial behaviour. Well, it hasn't been developed yet, so we, we couldn't possibly produce evidence that this will cause antisocial behaviour until it's in place. We have the fear of antisocial behaviour and um, experience near other facilities like this um, with the police coming and going, the issues of the, the professionals that constantly have to come back and forth to deal with um, the, 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 the unfortunate children in these facilities. Um, this is a terraced house and um, clearly, um, you know, if there are any issues with noise or anything, um, the neighbours are going to be um, disadvantaged. Um, the parking, um, the lane behind the, 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 the house, yes, is accessible, but, you know, from my observations on Grove Road, nobody uses the parking behind the, 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 the homes. Um, and so if it was consented, then it must be, that, you know, they do use a suitable parking and it must have evidence and, and you know, before it comes into beneficial use, that, that suitable parking is provided at the rear of the property. Um, to say they're going to do it, I, I, I'm afraid, you know, we need to see that it physically has been done. Also, if I could ask the officers, um, if this is a two-year um, temporary planning condition, do they have to come back to full committee um, to, to have that confirmed um, as a permanent change. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bozzi. Rod, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, uh, in the first instance, um, with a fear of crime, uh, you're, you're right, until uh, this up and running, uh, they aren't, they, you can't get any evidence, but you can, they you can point at evidence from other similar um, facilities. Uh, in this instance, I don't think there are any other facilities in uh, of this sort in Grove Road. Um, but what we're talking about here is, is two young children being looked after, uh, vulnerable young children, so they're not um, young offenders or anything like that. Um, so they'll be cared for on a one-to-one -one basis uh, around, the, around the clock. So um on that basis it's, it's not going to be a great number of of children or youngsters in this property so it, it would be uh, it, it would just be the same as having a family there a family you could have some unruly children and, and cause more impact than than what this facility would would have on the properties but we're having that two-year uh temporary permission just to see uh, not so much on on the uh, behaviour of the children, because I don't think we've got a, a particular issue with that. It's more to do with um, the intensity of use of that property and the number of visitors, etc. Um, so we've we've conditioned that, and we will review that after two years. They'll have to reapply. We'd only have to take it back to committee if uh, we have objections. Uh, three or more objections against the application or yourself uh, uh, calls it in so um so it's not an automatic go back to committee it's it's all it's dealt with as a brand new application uh, to seek to extend that uh, either for another temporary period or for um for permanent use but that two year period will allow us to um review how it's been operating and uh, hopefully that should 
uh, appease the um, local neighbours uh, and, and neighbouring residents, uh, which which will show them that it's not um, worse than having just a standard family next door to them. Uh, um, in terms of the parking, we we are pretty sure we got a condition asking for the provision of that before it's operational. So um, it's probably a good thing that uh, the residents in that road don't use that lanes because it won't block the use up of this area for uh, the staff members to park in there. Obviously, with a family house as it stands, it hasn't got any on-site parking at the minute. This will provide on-site parking, so this will be a betterment. With a family dwelling, you're probably expecting more tunes and goings than what this facility might uh, intend. So, with the two children under 18 years old, I can't, I can't imagine any of them would have their own car. Um, being looked after children, and uh, and the staff will be there for a long 12-hour period. So, it's not uh, going to be a case where they'll be popping in and out every every so often. So, compared to a normal family dwelling with the number of cars associated with normal um, family dwelling is probably going to be a lot less impact than uh, uh, with this with this facility on the surrounding streets. I think that was it, Chair. Thank you, Brad. Councillor Bozzi, please. Thank you. Um, I, was, I was going to ask you the ages of the, 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 the likely um, clients of the house, and you mentioned under 18. Now, clearly, um, a, a child of a teenager um, and, and a younger child are completely different in the, the, the sort of issues they can cause. Um, is there any way a, um, a condition can be put on the, the age groups that we can, uh, uh, you know, be, be, be looked after here? Um, and, and in terms of antisocial behaviour, um, I'm not aware of any other facility like this on Grove Road, but there are a number of other facilities around. One which, which, which I know um, I won't divulge the location of for, for confidentiality reasons, but I know the police are constantly coming back and forth because of the issues um, that the children have, have had, um, and, and obviously the police are involved anyway, um, but also because of antisocial behaviour. Um, but by, by the, 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 these young people, um, I know that they're, they're troubled and and are in care for a good reason, and that we do need these facilities. I'm just questioning: is this facility right in this location? Um, and, and and I really do con I'm concerned about the antisocial behaviour and the perception of antisocial behaviour. And clearly, there will be a lot of toing and froing because. Professionals will be constantly coming back and forth, um, you know, from from the council, from the other agencies, to to, to check and 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 keep tabs on these 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 children. And um, whilst, whilst I accept that the that the temporary application is is one way of you know sucking it and see, I just really am concerned about this. And um, you know, the residents do have genuine concerns it's not just nimbyism thank you councillor are you going to come back Rod, please yeah thanks well it, it, i think it would be unreasonable for us to limit uh, uh the age range but uh, any more than that really i think it's it's all done on a on a case by case basis and uh, and in accordance with the demand to house vulnerable children i think we'd be remiss in trying to restrict who they could house in, in a unit like this. Um, but you're right, with that two year trial period, all these issues will come out. So they'll, if it, if there are antisocial, or if there is antisocial behavior going on there and can be directly attributed to this property, then we can review that. But uh, until then, and I don't know what, which, which um, unit of accommodation you're referring to with, with the police being, um, invited to uh, to that property. It's I I don't know the specifics around that one, but that that could be a different type of of care home completely. So it's um, so, so it's difficult to compare them really. So so in this instance, I think we've put that condition on for a two year um, temporary consent just to allow that scope for us to review how much. Because we don't know yet 
how much uh, tunes of throw-ins, as I said in the report, is happening there. And then we can assess that and whether or not it's suitable in this location based on that intensity of use. So, so I think that's that's the best we can do on this one. All right, councillor. Thank you. I've got no more speakers. All in favour of the recommendation? No, I'd like to start. Aye. There is a few of us. Yes. Councillor Blendell, Chair. I think it indicates... Now they come on up, look. We've got Councillor Williams, Councillor Burnett, Councillor Webster. Um, yeah, so there's a few of us, Gary. I Gary. better start writing them down. All right, you come in uh, next, please, uh, Councillor Burnett. Uh, okay, let me set my camera on so you can all see my smiley face. Um, thank you, Chair. I, I just wanted to ask Rodri, obviously with the two-year um, conditional consent, how um, how are you going to uh, track the, say, uh, with antisocial behaviour? Uh, will the police report to you any report? Because obviously people may report something, say, next week, for example, and then two years down the line they may have moved and that information may be lost. So uh, I just want to know, for the residents, how are they going to report and you're making sure you're going to track that for two years down the line when we relook at this application? Thanks, Councillor. Yeah, it's, it would be ex obviously incumbent on, on the neighbours as long as they can directly attribute it to the uh, this particular facility um that once it's the two years temporary consent is uh, has elapsed and they have to apply in advance of that to renew it extend it if they choose or if they want to leave it and revert it back to a family dwelling whatever but that will be the point where the neighbors can uh, put in their representations explaining um what has been their experience over the last two years. Um, but obviously that would have to be evidence that it is actually linked to this uh, unit and not just random other f elements in the, in the street. Perhaps uh, uh, there might be a, a particularly difficult family in the street and uh, the residents might, might wrongly attribute that to this facility. So we're hoping in this two years, it will show, we will give the opportunity for the residents to see that it fits in. It's a, it's a useful type of accommodation in the residential area and it's suitable in the residential area and they won't have any issues with it. But that is when they'll have the recourse to, to make their representations known is when it's being renewed two years down the line. Okay, thank you, Rodri. I'll just point out the chair's left. Hmm. The chair's left the meeting. I don't know what's going on there. Um, Look for, for for temporary things, uh, John Paul. I'll I'll, t I'll let me take over. No, that's fine. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, everyone to know because I don't want us to wait for Gary to talk and he's not going to talk because he's not there. No, he's left it for someone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Once they've got a captive audience, then. Uh, um, sorry, uh, did I miss anything? Uh, no. Hello, Chair. You're back. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we, we we paused for you for your return, Chair. Yes, for now. Sorry, uh, Right. Councillor Bedell was on. Is he still uh, speaking? No, uh, Roger answered my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Right. The next speaker is Councillor Williams, please. Hi. Um, my concern is was when uh, Councillor Voisey started talking and um, explaining how many residents are unhappy with this and the location. Now, I take my child to Brintag School every day and I know I hate this street. It is so congested. It's so busy. And I always panic that if something's coming the other way, you've got to reverse all the way down the street because there isn't a single parking space for you to pull into to... Um, to let the other car pass. I hate it. Every morning I hate it. But if for me, I know when we've had um, uh, applications for Coity and I've said, no, you really need to see the area. We've gone out and had a site visit. And for me, if the local member has said, I want a site visit on this, I think it would be beneficial. Knowing this road slightly, not as much as anyone living down there, I, I think we should have had a site visit on this so that we can determine it properly. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Amanda. Jonathan, let me come in, please. Yeah, yes, yes, Chair, I'll, I'll, I'll come in. As, as I mentioned previously, we, we, we're not, or we're still not authorised to, to carry out member site visits. That's, that's something we, we need to discuss uh, going forward. Um, yeah, the, the, the local members made, made a point about the, the condition of the road. But what we have to take into account here is 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 that this this isn't a use that's going to be incredibly different from what we would normally expect from a from a, a house of this size in this location. And uh, excuse me. And it's um, it, it 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 yes, the, the road is, isn't the widest of roads. I, I know the area reasonably well. Um, but it's also in one of the most sustainable locations in uh, in Bridgend. It's in near the town centre. It's near to public transport facilities, railway stations, shops, and all the other facilities, open space facilities. So, so my concern isn't car parking or getting car access here. You know that that that's not that's not an issue because it is in a sustainable location. Um, I take the point that we need maybe there is a request to view the site, but you are, you know, I, I'm, what benefit members will derive from that, I'm, I'm not altogether sure. But it, it's 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 the actual use we should be looking at, and um, I think that that's that's what needs to be given the the, um, the, the clarity that um, that should be given the clarity the members need to focus on. Incidentally, this this isn't an unregulated activity there are standards that this this development will have to adhere to and that's outside the scope of planning that's not controlled by planning that's that's controlled by other um other legislation uh, the, the out, out, outside of, of what we can control under under the planning acts normally this, this sort of use of multiple use wouldn't require planning consent uh, it's only by uh, re by recent a case law that that indicates that because of the children are under 18 is that there is a there, there is a degree of care involved with that that takes it outside what we would normally associate with a dwelling house so that's the reason this is this has come to planning committee and it's historically that these these uses may have happened and they could be occurring and, and operating without anybody's um anybody's, um public knowledge um but again, I go back to the issue of the site visit. We 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 can't do a site visit at the moment, and that's something I have to take up with um, with the, the the legal officer to to arrange that. And if that that will have to also go through health and safety and risk assessments and so forth, I can't guarantee that this, this is deferred for a site visit. When that site visit will actually happen, and in that meantime, then there is it is open for the applicant to appeal that, and that decision then will be taken out of our hands. Um, but it's again, it's down to members if if they uh, if 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 that's what they wish to do. Are you happy with the answer, Councillor Williams? Yes, thanks. Thank you very much, Councillor Burnett, Please. 
Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to speak in my role as, as, as corporate parent champion. And I would like to remind all of our members that we are also corporate parents. And to make sweeping generalizations about these children, which will be living in this home, it will be their home, and associating them automatically with antisocial behavior and, 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 and other uh, nuisances, I, th I think I, I'm astounded. Having, having met a lot of children in, 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 in care, um, we, we, we can't go making those statements. I'm sorry. Um, I think this is, a, this is the ideal location to be placing our vulnerable children. They should be placed in a homely environment, in a residential street, and hopefully welcomed into our communities so that they can get the best start in life possible, which we as corporate parents have a duty to ensure happens. If we don't allow them to, if this property is good enough to be a family home, then it's good enough to be a residential care home. These children will have one-to-one -one attention. I have, I have, we've all got children in our neighbourhoods which, which create more noise than we would like and create antisocial behaviour. Are we suggesting that we vet every single person that, that, that moves into a new home to ensure that their children aren't, aren't, aren't going to misbehave? We can't do that and neither can we do that in this case. Our duty is to provide homes for children in our care and I'm just going to leave it there before I get more cross, to be honest. Thank you, Councillor, speaking from the art. Thank you very much. Councillor Webster, please. Thank you very much, Chair. I'd like to associate myself with a statement made by Councillor Burdett. Um, as most people uh, know, 16-year-olds, 10 and 15-year-olds, in fact, anything, any, any age of children, tend to be accompanied by slamming doors, shouting, and uh, testing the boundaries uh, in, 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 with their parents. Um, so there is going to be an element of noise, and I'm very, very keen um, just to ensure that um, in two years' time, that if, if this does come back, um, that normal household child development noise is not uh, factored in. Um, my concern around this is along Side, Councillor Voisey and Councillor Williams's concerns about parking. Um, at any one point, there could be four cars, four or five cars. Um, so I would like to see that um, parking bay um, at the back of the house completed as, as a matter of urgency. I would like to see it that, that it's a, a, a place where cars can go safely, that they're not riding over rubble, that kind of thing. I haven't been to site, so I don't know that that isn't the case. Um, so I, I, can I ask uh, officers if they can assure uh, members here that that parking space will be uh, adequate and completed before uh, children move in? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rod, please. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, condition of just have a look now. Condition three of the recommendation says the use hereby approved shall not operate until space has been laid out in permanent materials at the rear of within the curtilage of the site for two cars to be parked. This area shall be retained for parking purposes for two cars in perpetuity. So we're we're securing that in advance of them operating as a as a very small two child uh, care home. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Councillor. Councillor Stuman, please. Thank you. Um, my, my question revolves around social services and what sort of input social services have with development control. Um, for example, I know that there have been children's care homes um, placed within other poor parts of Wales, and the children that are actually sent to these care homes actually come from, let's say, Birmingham or Manchester or somewhere like that. Um, that then places in its own, own way another pressure on our already um, heavily involved social services. Can you please tell me um, how you have linked with social services um, to agree this application? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll, I'll come in there, Chair, if you like. Um, it's uh, to remind members we are looking at the 
planning merits, the land use planning merits of the application, what happens outside of that and under other legislation and through other uh, departments involvement that's that's a matter for them it's it's not a matter for us as, as the, the planning authority we, we just have to um, either grant or refuse planning permission for for that particular use so in this case we, we haven't um, been in, in contact with social services because it's it's not something that they're not a statutory consultee and it's not something that we would we would necessarily consult them on um, they would be involved presumably with uh -huh. the, the placement of children and it is children we're talking about in into these facilities but that's something that we wouldn't get involved with and uh -huh. um, whether that child is from the county borough or from elsewhere that's again it's not a matter for us to um uh -huh. to to really get involved with and, and that policy is is formulated elsewhere um within this authority and um and and um, th there's, there's national standards as well that, that have to be adhered to but we just got to focus on the land use planning merits of this of this particular facility and that's and, and that's all i can advise members on okay that's fine thank well, you I, I just didn't want social services to go to face additional burdens but thank you for your answer thank you Kamsha. thank you john -san. john -san, can we go to google, google map please now take over uh, thank you, Chair. I think Craig has got um, a Google Street View image of the of the site. If if members are happy, we can present that just to give you a flavour of what it looks like. All right, John. Then. Okay, thank thank you, Chair. That's that's thank you. fairly self-explanatory there. What what uh, what we're looking at? Thank you, Craig. Sorry, was there anything from behind the house? Because that's where we're looking at for parking. I I very much doubt if Google. Street view got behind there through through the back lane. Um, I, I don't know if they do back lanes. <laughs> if they do, all the better. But um, I mean, what, what we can show you, I, th I believe there is a plan. Um, I think it may be in the report that will actually perhaps show where the yeah. There's an aerial image view in, in the in the report. Uh, which gives you a satellite picture image of, of the site and, and you can see the lane and the uh, the um, the access from the rear and I think you is can that see page 99 it. John it's on page 88 oh what have I got yeah, 99 and it shows the rear lane and there are like a number of garages that, that access onto that lane yeah unfortunately uh, the Google Maps won't go behind there Thank you, Craig. Would you like, um, like to add anything, Jonathan? Uh, I, I got nothing more to to add, Chair, unless there's a highway officer that may want to clarify any of the the issue on on the parking. But uh, otherwise, no. Rob, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I've done a quick calculation based on this property. On the basis, it's, it's either an existing two or three bed property. It would require either two or three spaces already. Um, if, there is, if there is no existing facility, then that's going to be something that's already accommodated on street. The proposal for two children and two non-resident carers, according to our parking standards, would only require two spaces. So on that basis it, it's an ill detriment situation but if we if we can prov get seek provision for spaces to the rear then that is that is a highway benefit so on that basis there wouldn't be a highway objection to this proposal thank you rob right i got no more speakers all in favor of the recommendation councillor webster's asked to i think this just highlights the importance um of jonathan going back to cmb to ask for us to be able to go back out on site meetings um, because it is 
it's this you know this this could be a very simple um discussion in 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 uh, development control committee but it's turned into a longer one because we can't access it and it, it is so important that we do get permission to go back out now i'm just that's all i wanted to say really just to express that thank you thank you councillor councillor bennett yeah. please sorry Thank you, Chair. Um, so I can't get my camera on. Um, I really don't see that there's a need for a site meeting. If this house is deemed suitable for a residential home, there could be four cars. They could sell this house privately and have a family move in with four cars and there's nothing anyone can do about it. If this property is suitable for a family to live in, then it's suitable for a different kind of family of 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 our looked after children to live in. Thank you, Councillor. John, are you going to speak, please? John Spansley, please. No, Chair, just saying a site meeting will achieve nothing. We we need to um, no. make a decision on the application. Well, uh, we've had a mover, we've had a seconder, uh, and I got almost speakers. All in favour of officer's recommendation? Aye. 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 Yes. Yeah. Anybody yes. against? So, sorry, I, yes. I, did, I did put a comment that I'd like to vote against the application. We know that. Thank you. Anyone I else? Commented, I commented against as well. Thanks. Yeah. Amanda, yeah. Robbie. Rod. Chair, yeah, yes, with, with uh, the two members. Um, Would you like to uh, put this down electronically or? or so happy with that? I think it's carried, Chair. Thank and you very much. I've got two against, that's all, and never rest in favour. Rest two voted. You. Right. Thank you. Thank you much. Item 12, please. I'm going to turn Woodside Avenue. Did check, please. Rod again? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Oh. Right. Scrolling down, bear with me. Application is referred to committee to consider the objections raised by local residents in this instance. As the previous agenda item, the application seeks permission for the change of use of the existing building from a Class C three A dwelling to a Class C two providing supported living for two looked after children with two members of staff. Existing dwelling is a traditional semi-detached dwelling and no internal or external alterations are proposed. As stated earlier, in some circumstances, residential dwellings can be converted into children's care homes without the need for planning permission. Each proposal has to be assessed on its own merits. The recent court judgment concluded that children under 18 years living together where carers do not permanently stay at the property cannot be classed as a household and planning permission is required for the change of use from C3 to C2. It is considered that the conversion of an existing semi-detached property to a small care home with no major external or internal works would provide a valuable and additional alternative type of living accommodation in the locality. The home would accommodate up to two children and it would be registered with a care inspectorate of Wales. Uh, there would be a maximum of two carers on the premises at any one time, pro providing one-to-one -one supervision with staff handover taking place at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Parking will be provided for vehicles at the side of the property. The property is located ahead of a cul-de-sac with its own off-street parking. The plot also benefits from an enclosed rear garden. Given the proximity of the site to nearby properties in the event of any significant increase in comings and goings, uh, caused by the actual operational requirements of the care home could potentially result in unacceptable levels of noise and disturbance to nearby residents. Therefore, a two-year temporary permission is recommended to enable us to fully assess how the care home functions in practice and whether it operates in a manner compatible with the surrounding residential area. Again, objectors, concerns and anxieties about the proposed use are acknowledged, but there is no solid evidence to demonstrate the change of use of dwelling to a children's care home would result in any increase in antisocial behaviour in the neighbourhood. To conclude, the proposed cha children's care home is a residential type use in a residential area, and therefore there is no objection in principle to this use in this location. The two-year temporary permission is rec recommended 
to enable the impact of the proposal to be fully assessed. Thank you, Chair. I go right. Well, I've got no more speakers here. All in favour of the recommendation? Aye. Yeah. Second? Yeah. Aye. Thank you very much. Right. Item 13, Land of Eastbed Industrial Estate, Black Mill, Bajen. Phil, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, an application submitted by the Education and Family Support section of the Council to develop a new Welsh medium childcare facility on land at Isfin Industrial Estate in the community of Black Mill. Um, it's a sloping site and this building will be erected on the lower part of the site. It shares its boundary with a number of properties or a couple of properties on Ebenezer Court. Um, it's a single story building and it, it will measure 21 metres by 10, reaching a maximum height of 5.2 metres from ground level. It will, the accommodation will have various rooms within it, quiet rooms, storage rooms, and it will cater for up to 34 children ranging from ages zero to five years and including eight members of staff. Um, the plans on your report members, looking at sort of page 111 to 112, You've got an idea of where the building sits on, on the site. Uh, to the northern part of the building or beyond the application site, you see a copse of trees. Um, they're being retained. They're not affected by the development. There was some concern that this site was cleared um, before the planning application was submitted. And uh, I'll come on to address that just a bit later on in the discussions. You, you can see the access arrangements, the car parking arrangements. Um, and they, they've been looked at by our colleagues in highways. The history to the site, there, there is a history. There's previous consents been, well, previous consents made and applications refused of various developments on this site over the years. Um, we've got uh, consultation responses all complete there. Number of representations received from the community. You can see a number of objections. And uh, on page 114, you've got a summary of those objections. Some concern about the appropriate use of the land, the loss of the vegetation, um, site clearance possibly affecting ecology, whether the road network can accommodate the, the development in terms of additional traffic movements generated by the um, the facility, and safety concerns in terms of the interrelationship between the traffic on the industrial estate and the childcare facility. All of these issues have been, been carefully examined. Um, and I've set out the policy context for this particular development. In terms of the principle of the development, it's, it is allocated in the LDP for a, um, it's kind of a mixed use regeneration site. That, that, that goes back to a scheme submitted some years ago where there's gonna be residential and employment and community type uses. So we, we, we're reasonably comfortable that this community facility sits within that policy context. Um, it's all about, however, achieving a high standard of design. And uh, we think in terms of the the building and the form of the building and the parking arrangements that, that that will be achieved. Impact of the development on highway safety. Well, the transportation officers have, <laughs> have looked at that in some detail. And there are some tweaks to the scheme that, that, that are required in terms of improving active travel routes, revising slightly the parking arrangements. We're looking whereby if you're a parent dropping off your child, that the parking arrangement is slightly revised so you can go into the site, maneuver out and come back out to avoid any parking on the industrial estate road. We will be looking for conditions to put um, traffic orders and, 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 and preventing any parking on that road. We, the, the view is in terms of the times that this will operate, it will operate probably outside, the parents will be bringing the children to the site outside the kind of peak time for highway traffic. So th there isn't the concern that the, there, there's a significant impact on the actual highway network. Um, impact on the living conditions of residents. As I said, there is a boundary of this site very close to existing houses. And there was some concern that when they cleared all the scrub and vegetation, they have become more exposed as residents because they can now see more of the industrial estate and the in businesses that are opposite them. Uh, I, I, that, that's something that ultimately we couldn't do an awful lot about. The site clearance was undertaken in a proper way. The, the, the site was looked at in terms of the ecology and the clearance was done under the guidance of an ecologist who wrote the report. So that, that loss of vegetation is something we, we couldn't really do a lot about. However, we will be looking through conditions of consent 
to deal with the boundaries with these existing properties and see if there can be further enhancements, whether it be fencing, new landscaping that goes in, to try to lessen the impact of this development on those residents. As I said, the wider development of the existing industrial estate, that, that's, that's something we're, we're probably going beyond us. There is, an, there is a case that there's going to be the toing and froing of parents, children, staff from this facility and, and some outdoor activity associated with the outdoor play facility. So there's a degree of noise that would be generated by that activity. But the context is important here. It's on the edge of an industrial estate. So there's, a, there's the busy road along one side or to the, to the north of the site. You've got the industrial estate to the south. So it, it seems unlikely. There's no noise here, but it seems very unlikely the noise from this operation is going to cause such a problem to the residents beyond the current noise environment. So from that perspective, that, that hasn't been a concern that is, that, that is way too heavy on our minds as, in terms of the assessment of the planning application. Ecology, and lots of trees. Um, as I said, dealt with that. A comprehensive report, report submitted, um, looked at bats, looked at the ecology, and the work that was done was really in accordance with the guidelines. There's an opportunity, however, to put something back here in terms of the design of the building and getting some uh, maybe bat boxes, bird boxes to be incorporated within that so we can try and put something back in terms of our duty under the Section 6 of the Environment Act. Um, so generally speaking, in terms of ecology and the opportunity to replant, safeguarding the tree plant into the north by condition, um, the biodiversity interest we think of, all right, there's been a loss in the sense the site has been cleared, but there's an opportunity for some compensatory works to be secured through the planning permission. Members, the, the recommendation, the conclusion is the development is compliant with policies uh, and is in compliant with Section 3 of the Wellbeing and Future Generations Act. The recommendation before you is to approve the development subject to the conditions listed in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. I've got no speakers. Can I have a move and a second, please? Move. Can I move, Jack? All in favour? Yes. yes. Thank yes. you very much. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Item 14. There are 20 respite close per call. Rodney, please. Thanks, Chair. All right. This application is referred to committee to consider the objections raised by the adjoining occupier and Porthcawl Town Council. The application proposes the construction of a decked area to the rear of the dwelling in Rest Bay Close, which is elevated above its rear garden. Due to the topography of the area, uh, the application site is at a higher level than, than the neighbouring property, 19 Rest Bay Close. It is considered that the condition requiring the provision of a 1.7 metre high screen along the northern boundary of the decking, combined with the negotiated separation distance of 1.7 metres with a boundary, will sufficiently safeguard the privacy of the neighbouring occupier to prevent unreasonable overlooking of their rear garden. The application is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I've got no speakers. Can I move in a second, please? Move. Recommendation. Second. All in favour? Aye. Uh, thank you very much. Item 15, appeals. Jonathan, it's the same. I note the appeals. Chair, can I move we note the appeals, please? Thank you very much, Richard. It's got a second of there? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you very much. 16, trainer log. Jonathan, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, we, we had quite, a, quite an interesting training session last week on, on LDP strategic sites. Um, the next training session we will look to arrange for September. Uh, we will be looking to do this on placemaking. The members will, will know that I did distribute some information that came from Welsh Government recently on uh, uh, just reaffirming uh, the uh, principle set out, placemaking principle set out within uh, Planning Policy Wales, uh, and in particular in response to the um, COVID crisis. So I, I hope all members received that and um, uh, that that was useful information. Um, so I look to expand a little bit on that now in the, in the next training session. Um, and interestingly, if any members have got any examples of good or bad design that they wish to forward to me, and, um, and perhaps I can include that in, in, in the presentation as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Oh, one last one item, not quite to do with um, training, but following on from the LDP work that we did, 
we will be looking to take a report to the next Development Control Committee meeting on uh, extending the, the delivery agreement for the, the LDP. Uh, and, and that is um, that, that's, that's an agreement that, that's between the Council and, and Welsh Government as to how we wish to, uh, or how we are intending to deliver that, that, that plan. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we, we, we've had to uh, uh, delay some aspects of that plan coming forward. Uh, so that that will be outlined in, in in a report that will come to the to the next meeting, uh, and uh, I think Councillor Blundell is asking a question, Chair. Councillor Blundell, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, it's just on the LDP presentation that we had last uh, last week, was it? All the days have come come together. Um, is it possible I can share that with my community council, or is that still embargoed or? Um, well, it, it's at the moment it's it's fairly sensitive. We don't what we don't wish is to is to bring that into the public domain just yet. It's 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 not highly secret, but it's it's we, what we don't want to do is is to start the consultation process before we've formally requested to start the consultation process. If you know what I mean, um, the, the sites are not uh, are ones that have already gone through the. Um, preferred sites process that that's already does happened, um, but the presentation that you you had does contain a little bit more information over and above that. So we would uh, would value that you keep it as as within the development control committee for for the time being until um, uh, until we start that process where we will go out to full consultation, and that that is an issue for us at the moment because consultation what we would do traditionally. We can't do because of um, social distancing. So, whereas we could probably have presentations to larger audiences, we may need to do presentations to smaller, more focused groups. So, at the moment, we're still trying to work out how we can actually take the consultation and um, uh, community involvement forward. Uh, so, I, I would, I, I would. It's up to you entirely what you do with the information. But I, I, I would request that at the at the moment, it's it's. It's something that that's for the for the site of the development control committee only. But eventually, they will come to full council, and, and then it'll be you know um, for, for public discussion. All right, councillor. Yeah, that's fine. I just thought I'd ask anyway. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, John. Then, well, I can urge your business. I'd like to thank the members for being so patient, and also the officers. It's very hard something sitting here. You 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 can't. Do what they want to do, you know what I mean? But anyway, yes, the meeting did go well, apart from one or two hiccups. Well, thank you very much, all, all and I guess, and I'd like to thank Mark Carvin. You take care, all, and stay safe.